second. Can you guys hear me? Let me know if you can hear me. I'm using some new devices today, so if things go wacky, I will have to fix them. Oh, you're welcome for the seed content. I'm glad people like it. They do get way less views than um, a lot of my other videos, and YouTube loves to yell at me about that, but I do not care. Oh, great. Excellent. Yay. How is everybody? Happy Saturday. This is live right now, Autumn. <laughs> How are you? It's been a little while. Hi, Sophie. I was running around last minute trying to find all of my my pots so I can get some planting planting going today. Very exciting. It's almost February. So if you're in zone six, zone seven, it's just about go time. At least to get some stuff started. I feel like my chat is way behind. So I apologize if that is the case. I am going to put you on my phone. Just in case. Do, 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 do. Okay. How do I work YouTube? My channel. Cold and depressing here. I feel the need for spring. I feel that. <laughs> well, Veggie Chompers starts theirs in March. Veggie Chompers also has a great gardening channel. I'm gonna check her out. Uh, we have been um, watching each other's seed videos. <laughs> oh, good. I even have my headphones in. Clever. Okay. Yeah, it looks like my chat is a bit behind. All right. That's great. Okay. Time to get those spirit tomatoes varieties. Oh, I, maybe we can talk about that today because I have... So many different varieties of tomatoes and I don't have any idea how I'm going to choose because no matter how much I try to delude myself, um, I do not have room for all of them. It was in the 40s and 50s for Angela. My plants are actually growing without a grow light. Oh, so jealous. Yeah, Bill, it is, it is mighty, mighty cold in New England today. Yesterday was really crazy, too. I went out to get the mail, and I was like, oh, my God, it hurts to breathe out here. And we're finally getting snow. I feel like when I was a kid, we got it in, like, December. And now it's, like, February, March seems to be when all the snow comes. Zone 6, ready for Z seed talk. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Mr. Stripey. Yes, I actually I have that one as well. Um, I pretty much have them all. Uh, <laughs> like Pokemon, and I have collected them all. I just, I don't know what came over me this winter. It's just like I need to have everything. And I never had any intention of, of, of trying to plant everything. But I do feel like with, like, spring, and then you get the summer growing season, and then you have the fall... Like I can get a good amount of this stuff in the ground. I'm just like, <laughs> figure it out. I have a good amount of yard out there. Um, I don't have a lot of beds like pre um, matured, but we'll make it work. We made it work last year. I mean, last year I didn't have any beds and now I have uh, two raised beds and then two larger in ground beds. And then this year, I'm going to make a little hoop house greenhouse, which is going to be fabulous. And I can't wait to get started on that. And then I'm also going to put in, hopefully, three more beds. <laughs> I'm going to try to put in three more beds. Probably only one more. I don't even know if I'm going to do another raised bed. It might be slightly raised. But I think for the most part, they're going to be kind of no dig. Um, well, I'm going to dig them the first year like I did last year, but then it's going to be very little tilling after that. Hey, Cody. It is. It's so cold. Oh, my God. I can't stand it. I always get tomatoes with funny names like Frodo. Yes. I uh, say what I got. Give you guys a little tomato seed tour de force here. So 
got so many from last year and then like been swapping with friends and and y'all have seen I've been ordering so it's been quite quite a few. Brad Gates from Wild Boar Farms will be donating some seeds to our first place winner at the end of 2021, Big Old Tomato Challenge. He just confirmed last night, talk about fangirling. That is incredibly exciting. So um, what Pinky is talking about over here is that she is doing um, a, what is it, like the biggest, you're doing like a tomato uh, challenge where you're trying to grow like the biggest tomato, right? My, did I do that? Did I say that right? I have dog shit for brains. If we haven't been over that. So let's see. All right. So I'll run you through the list. I've got the Juliet tomato, a black cherry tomato. Um, I have a few of my Dancing with Smurfs from Fruition left, which is my favorite cherry tomato so far. Uh, honey drop. I think I have a couple seeds left in here. Yeah, there's only a few left in here. I probably won't grow that one this year just because I want room for new ones. Uh, I have the cherry ember, the pianolo del Vesuvio, did I say that right? Face tomato, indigo apple, Thai pink pear, 10 fingers of Naples. Um, I grew that one last year. It did okay, got a lot of blossom and rot, but I think that was my fault with the watering. Um, the watering is was tricky this year. We are doing drip tape or something. Some kind of irrigation is going in that garden, um, mainly for the veggie beds. And I think that besides like maybe the front flower bed, I may just hand water the other ones. We'll see. A lot of them are perennials, so they don't really need it. Um, show. Yes, and let me put up her IG for you. As soon as it pops up on my slow chat, I can uh, do that for you. <laughs> Yes, so she's got her IG in the chat, and then you guys can check that out if you're growing tomatoes this year and you want to join in. I have Thorburn's terracotta tomato. That's definitely going in. The President Garfield tomato, which is a very funky looking one. Uh, this was a free pack. Uh, tasty pink beef steak. Rose de Burn. Dr. Weiches. Weiches? Witches? Weiches? Uh, Cherokee Purple, Kellogg's Breakfast, Pink Ox Heart, Climbing Triple Crop, Mortgage Lifter, Champagne Bubbles Cherry Tomato, Mr. Stripey Tomato, Desdemona's Heart Tomato, Amish Paste Tomato, Lemon Drop Tomato, also a cherry, Paul Robeson, uh, Pineapple Organic Tomato, and the Hillbilly Tomato, and then my wild boar farms envelope here. Oh, we also got some Zella Jakes, and we're not done yet. Okay. Uh, Brad's Atomic Gray, Pink Berkeley Tie Dye, Striped German Lucid Gem, Blue Boarberries, uh, the Homestead Tomato. Probably not going to grow this one again. This one um, did not do super well for me. It's a huge producer, but I think it needs a little more heat and a little bit of a longer season. I've heard a lot of people in the South grow this one. So I'll probably pass these along. Um, and then the world's smallest cherry tomato, which was quite fun, quite fun. I don't know if it's the smallest. I don't know if that claim is correct. I've seen some pretty small uh, container cherries. So yeah, that's, uh, I have too many. I have too many, too many tomatoes to, to decide. So oh, don't spam my chat. No spamming the chat. Very annoying. Okay, so yeah, so you guys will have to let me know if any of those, if you've grown any of those, and you think that I absolutely need to grow them because I could use some help. <laughs> Frankly, I also have a lot of pepper seeds, and um, that is also difficult for me to narrow down. But peppers at least are smaller, so I can fit more. Cool. Yes, I've heard great things about the thorn Thornburns. I cannot say that name. Thornburns, terracotta, and the Kellogg's. Excellent. I think those will definitely be making it into my um, my final round. <sighs> it's gonna be hard, guys. I'm gonna decide. 
but I did try to make sure that a lot of the stuff that I got besides tomatoes and peppers, um, if I got a lot of varieties, it was stuff like beets, radishes, lettuce, things like that, because I can fit a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of things. <laughs> no worries, Cody. No worries. The black cherry were good. Excellent. Yeah, I, I know that um, the local farmer's market grows those as well, which is usually a pretty good indicator that that kind will do well in my growing zone. What are these? Oh, these are the seeds I'm going to try to plant. So I have onion seeds today. And then I also got some lysianthus seeds from an Etsy seller. And I got to tell you, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you guys what I actually received, but I'm a bit disappointed, to be honest. Um, I'm not even going to haul it. I'm not even going to do like a haul on my channel because I don't even want. Like they basically said, like I understand that these were pelleted and I know Lysianthus seeds are very small. Um, I did not read the fine print on the Etsy listing to notice that they were only sending me eight seeds for $4. Um, I don't know if that's normal for Lysianthus, but um, they basically sent me the equivalent of an empty cocaine bag. of. <laughs> do you see the three seeds? that are still pelleted. Like, I'm sure that there's seeds in here. I can't see them. I'm sure they're there, but like, I don't even know how I'm gonna get them out of the cracks of this bag. So just not impressed. And then here's the other one. This one, I can actually see some of the seeds. None of the pelleting really held on, but I can see a few seeds in there. But like, look at this crap. <laughs> Like, why would you even send me that? Like, don't even send me that. That's, that's ridiculous. And then I also got, like, petunia seeds from them as well. And there's, like, 10 in here. Like, I need to start reading things before I order. <laughs> the Peter Pepper. I don't have that one. Do you have seed for the black beauty tomato from wild boar farms? I do not. We could totally swap some tomato seeds though. That would be cool. Uh, hello in Finland. I actually have strawberries. That is also in my pile. So you are in luck. I can find them. Uh, what do I do with them? Oh boy, I'm already all discombobulated. I stuck my strawberries in here. Who did I order them from? Uh, what did I do with them? Okay, well now I don't know where they are. <laughs> I do have them. Oh wait. No, where are they? Damn it. <laughs> okay, well, somewhere in this mess, we have some strawberry seeds as well. I got um, alpine strawberries, a couple kinds of alpines. I'm going to try and grow from seed. Um, and if that doesn't work, I will just buy some plants this year. I didn't do any strawberries last year at all. We have a lot of birds, so I'm going to have to definitely bird net them off. But I think that'll be fine. So I've got some, um, I think this is just cocoa and perlite right here. Uh, just some uh, no food in here kind of mix. So this is just cocoa and perlite. I don't think there's peat in this mix. I borrowed some from Mike. <laughs> long, I need a long pinky nail to get those seeds out, Kimberly says. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I was like, what is this? And like, she sent it in like a, um, or they sent it, I don't know. Uh, they sent it in like a little uh, envelope with like one packing peanut in it, which I think that packing peanut probably just mashed them all <laughs> to little bits. I just, and if I had taken the time to read her shop reviews past the first page because for some reason websites all like aggregate like the lower reviews to the second page. I don't know if like I'm imagining that or if that's like a thing that's happening, but I'm finding I have to dig 
for bad reviews, even when there's like a good amount of them. And there were quite a few, quite a few poor reviews in there. Uh, granted, most of us did not read the item description, which Etsy does a really good job of hiding, uh, which does kind of say that there's almost no seeds in the package. But that aside, like, I would rather them not be pelleted and be in one of those little, you know, um, like these guys, you know? Like, if you're going to sell the xanthus seeds, which are tiny, like, get your packaging together. I'm so annoyed. Like, and I'm not going to leave, like, a crappy review, but I'm definitely going to um, just post, like, hey, if you're buying these, like, make sure you pay attention to the uh, seed quantity and don't necessarily expect to get that. So, yes, the spout cap. Oh, thank you. Um, these came from Amazon, from, from the evil empire. But, oh my God, amazing. These are so amazing. This was a couple of bucks. Uh, cool runner bottle cap, vegetable mist nozzle. Uh, it came in a little three pack. And you just like, because I have a regular watering can that's just like a spout and it just pours and it displaces all the soil and perlite, super irritating, especially when you're watering house plants and everything from like up above. A lot of times I'll just end up like flooding all the soil out of the side. So, oh God, I'm tired. I'm already tired. Um, so I need something to stir this dirt. Hold on. Sorry, potting mix, it's not dirt. <laughs> Trying so hard to break that habit. Hold on. Move it over. There we go. I also have a little bundle of Dollar Tree stuff that I got and another planty thing to show you guys. I was just like, I'm just going to sit here and plant seeds and then show everybody the stuff that I spent money on this week when I probably shouldn't have. Oh, thank you. Yes, hitting the like button is helpful because YouTube has been very unkind to me lately. And I don't know why. And I don't know what I did to deserve it. I mean, I guess I have some ideas. But, um, oh, okay. So downside to this spout thing is it may just spray water all over your laptop. All right. So I'm pre-moistening my seed mix, which if you are new to this song and dance is pretty crucial. Um, don't try to water after you plant seeds or you're going to displace your seeds all over the place, especially if they are tiny and you only have like three of them. <laughs> So I'm going to let that soak in a little bit and show you my new toy. So if you guys are houseplant people and you follow Daryl from Houseplant Journal, you may have seen this before. This is a little light meter and I picked this up so that I could just take a walk around my house and get an actual measurement of whether my plants are getting enough light. And um, that is a thing that has been keeping me up at night for three years now. So to have this finally is really nice. It was, it's just kind of been sitting in my, uh, in my wish list forever and ever um, because I was always like, yeah, I don't, I don't need it, you know, but now that I have all the grow lights up and I'm sort of growing with a new setup. So I need, I was, I felt very uncomfortable that perhaps my seedlings were getting too much light and rather than wait for them to tell me that I would rather just know. <laughs> Hello, Susie. Thank you so much. Welcome. We're uh, planting some seeds at some point and uh, checking out my new light meter. This looks like an 80s like cell phone, like a 90s cell phone. I feel like I had one of these. Um, but anyway, it measures the lux or the foot candles. You can set it to do both. And it has been very enlightening. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but it's been kind of fun to just walk around the house and be like, all right. Am I being too fussy? Which the answer is no. Um, I need to be a little fussier, actually. But um, 
and I'm pretty impressed with how uh, well some of my plants are doing with apparently not enough light, but more of them are in good light than I expected. So that's really exciting. And I figured out that I could turn all of my LED grow lights down pretty much considerably and they're still getting the equivalent of like direct sunlight outside which is uh, nice because being in this room while I'm working with LED lights turned all the way up can be a little, can be a little much. <laughs> yeah, those three tiny ass seeds in a Coke baggie. I know they better germinate. And that's, a, and the thing that sucks is Lysianthus are notoriously difficult to germinate. I have not even tried it before. This is my first time. And now I feel like I have already been kneecapped, you know, <laughs> like, damn it. He's, Give me no chances here. Just check on my my son's father's coming to pick him up, and I have this tendency to um, not see that he's texted me that he's outside for a long time. <laughs> I feel like, oh sh shit, Aiden, your dad's outside. <laughs> you like that dad joke? Just getting home from work at Costco. Time to smoke a bowl, clean some leaves, and listen to the stream. Excellent. Yes. We are out of we are out of the smokables right now. It's a bit distressing. I'm gonna have other means, you know, but those are my favorite means. This stuff, um, I think I could empty an entire gallon of water into, and it still would not be damp. So this is definitely a cocoa mix. It is just cocoa and perlite. So there's nothing in there, no food, no nothing, because I'm using this just for uh, like a sterile seed starting medium. So I hope it's sterile. Um, and they don't need the food. I'm gonna do that with liquid fertilizer once they get going. So just a little perlite and cocoa. And then I will probably use my vermiculite um, on the top layer, which will help kind of keep the moisture up at the top a little bit longer. I have a feeling that this this mix here is probably going to dry out a little quicker than the other one that I used, but I am out of that, so we'll make do. I'm not going to a store if I can help it. Um, my fellow works at a grocery store, for those who do not know, uh, so a lot of the times I can just text him and be like, hey, bring me home this. And then usually he forgets the first night. But I know if I ask ahead of time, he will <laughs> he'll get it there for me. It's like Amazon. Like, order something. We'll be here in a couple of days. <laughs> because I don't remember to text him to remind him. And then he doesn't remember. The ADD relationship. <laughs> Hello, obsessive gardener. It is going well. I am moistening some seed starting mix here. And then we are going to plant some things. And I have, um, we're working with these little guys this year in a, in a tray, just in a regular black 1020 tray. And so far I'm liking that. I do have one plug tray but I'm, I'm just, I'm so tired of buying them every year and I can't afford for to pay for like, you know, like Bootstrap Farmer has nice ones, I guess, but they're like expensive and then they're always sold out. So I'm just, and I hate throwing them out every year. So I'm determined not to use those cheesy little plug trays this year. I love vermiculite. It doesn't stick to the dainty roots. Yes. Well said. Vermiculite is a wonderful and underutilized thing. Um, because a lot of us houseplant people are trying to keep, you know, trying to get our plants to dry out nice and fast. And so we don't usually reach for the vermiculite, but it's great for propagating, right? I haven't done, I haven't propagated in vermiculite, but I'm pretty sure that is a thing. A few bags of cocoa and one of perlite and an orchid mix. I caved and made a mix for outdoors. New favorite for outside. Yes. I know sometimes, you know, necessity is the mother of invention, as they say. Last year, I, I really uh, got a lot of mileage out of some older potting soil and just kind of like re-amending it and then using that for my outdoor pots. And that felt nice. I was like, oh, okay, because I was like peak COVID, you know, so you couldn't get anything. And I was like, um, I need to start a garden here. <laughs> I don't have time for this. 
Ah, oh, the beginning days. How naive we were. <laughs> Oh. I'm glad that uh, we happened to get a two liter of Pepsi with pizza last night because um, I never have plastic bottles with screw tops. And I didn't think about that when I ordered those little spout things. I'm like, oh, I don't even, I don't even buy stuff like that. So how am I going to, even when I get waters that usually have like the shorter cap, it's a dream for propagating. So there you go. Hot tips. I had good results with the Jiffy tray with the pucks and the heat mat, but I want something more sturdy. I haven't used those Jiffy pellets in like forever and ever. I know that um, the year that I used them, God, when I was, I, used to, I, used to, I tried to grow in this, basically like this kind of um, footage. I don't even know if that's a square foot. I just basically had like a square foot of like garden patch when I lived with my ex out back. And like, they were so crazy about the backyard that they wouldn't let me have any other Oh, yay! Here's my boyfriend. We have weed now. That's great. <laughs> Thanks, baby. Um, but we had a, a tiny little dirt patch uh, go in there that I could plant in. And I remember I used the Jiffy pellets for that. And everything died. But I didn't know what I was doing. So <laughs> that's probably more the reason. The squirrels, yes. I, I, I was in um, Petra. Thank you. Um, I was in Petra from Fruition Seeds' Instagram live today, and she was talking about, you know, just like, oh, don't, you know, don't um, transplant sunflowers. And somebody was asking in the chat because they had squirrels. And I was like, I do it. I know it's not, I know it's not best. I know they're not going to be the happiest that they could be. But if you don't transplant your sunflowers uh, in the spring, you ain't getting sunflowers here. You ain't getting them. Them squirrels will eat that shit before you even have a chance to think about it. And I find that that's the only thing that, like, the squirrels really attacked in my garden last year. I, I tend to leave a good chunk of my yard unmowed, um, which I have found. And I literally had a rabbit living in my yard last year. It lived, it slept um, in between my pepper pots. Like, it was some grass that had grown between the pepper pots because I had been too lazy to weed whack between them. And uh, it made, like, a little den in there and stuff. And it never bothered anything. I had kale, I had lettuce, I had all kinds of veggies growing, flowers, just stuff you would think that a rabbit would be all over and um, never touched a single thing because I just, I had weeds everywhere and, and they like the clover and they like the, all the little native uh, roughage that was growing in the corner of the yard. So a bunny never really touched anything, but that, those uh, sunflower seedlings. Nope. <laughs> I cannot keep those in the garden to save my life. Skunks dig up my seedlings. You know, that might be what happened to me the year before last. I had a lot of digging, and I didn't really see as many squirrels that year. I'm sure we've got, you know, skunks, obviously. Does anybody know a good place I can figure out what seeds need cold stratification? Yes. Um, does winter, I think wintersown.org. You may be able to, um, I know that that has really extensive and good lists for stuff that you can winter sow. And a lot of times, um, anything that's perennial that you're winter sowing would be a cold stratified um, seed. Let's see if you are talking about um, trying to sprout alpine strawberries. Do those need cold stratification? Oh, if they do, I might have to change my plans now that I'm thinking about it. Um, if they do, are you aware of the winter sowing technique, like in the milk jugs? I'm not sure where you are, did you say? No, okay. Oh, DC. <laughs> I'm assuming, if, well, if that's the place, I guess. Maybe you're into comics. <laughs> kind of water do you use on house plants and seedlings? So I have a uh, small boy water filter and it filters out chlorine and sediment. I don't know if Mike's still here, but if it does anything else, he can tell you. Um, it's not super cheap, but considering how long you have clean water, it's it's, it is kind of cheap. Like um, the chlorine filter is a little more expensive than it comes with like a different kind of filter you can get that's a little less expensive, but because our water is so chlorinated here, um, 
and we get fluoride in the water and all kinds of stuff. So I just got like the really good filter, but it's called a small boy. It's made by Hydrologic. So I have that hooked up to my tap water and I use that for all of my house plants, except um, my carnivorous plants, which will get distilled water only. And then usually if I have enough distilled water laying around, I just buy jugs and just keep them, you know, because I only have a few plants that really need distilled water because that filter does so well. Um, I can usually get by just buying a few jugs of distilled water every couple of weeks and I'll give those to my carnivorous plants. And then, you know, like my, um, like this guy over here, my, um, my anthurium clear nervium, if I have distilled water, I'll, I will definitely give this that but it's it's gotten filtered water before and it's been fine um the only thing is you don't want to do um i learned the hard way using like i used to buy a lot of spring water and bottles and stuff and then i would dump like whatever was left into my plants um without really thinking that like minerals are added to that water so sometimes that kind of wreaks a little havoc on my more sensitive plants <laughs> okay so I have almost enough little cubbies to fill this whole thing. I'll have to get more. Let's see what we can find to plant. What carnivorous plants do I have? I'm considering buying one. So I have, I would say in my experience so far, the ones that I've had the easiest time keeping alive are the Saracenias, like the tall um, pitcher plants. Let me, I can even grab one for you. <laughs> Here, love. Ooh. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Okay, we're going to bring the jar. Hold on. <laughs> oh. oh, don't have a lot of room in here. Sorry. Okay, so this guy is, uh, has apparently grown into the moss in here. But these kind of pitcher plants, the taller ones, this is a Saracenia Judith Hindle. I find that these have been the easiest for me so far. Like I feel like the um, the Venus flytrap has been fine. Um, I keep mine under pretty powerful LED lights, not like you know growing fucking cannabis LED lights, but like the next ones down that I have. Um, and it was really happy under that. And then I moved it, um, and I think that it's going into dormancy because I changed the environment. Um, so you have to deal with the dormancy with the with the fly traps a little more, I think. But that Saracenia has been great. It's been really easy to deal with, and they're really cool. <laughs> but I mean, everybody told me that I couldn't keep a Venus fly trap alive, and I have. It's fine. It just needs. It does need um, powerful lights. Not super. You know, I'm sure you can get away with whatever LEDs, but um, it definitely appreciates like the high reading. And you know, now that I can read the lights, I can tell you exactly that it took about, oh, it's like 20,000. Now I'm forgetting. Okay, I lied. I'm forgetting what the actual reading is. I don't want to say the wrong thing, but basically the equivalent of full sun is, is hitting my Venus fly traps. And I also have another um, pitcher plant as well, um, a Nepenthes in a terrarium out there and then another nepenthes in a terrarium in my bedroom the one in my bedroom is recovering kind of had like a rough transition here but it, it's it's doing okay and then the pitcher plant that is in the terrarium out here is doing great and that one's just been really happy if you do get um any of the other ones except the venus flytrap i do recommend having them in some even if it's like an open terrarium just something to like isolate some humidity for it. it seems to make them happy but the venus fly traps do not like to be enclosed so i did have some um drusera in it died <laughs> it didn't make the transplant when i put it in the um terrarium unfortunately i would like to get some more sundews are really cute <sighs> oh see i need this in my life I'm blind and I can't read that. Pinguaculas? Pinguaculas. Uh, absolutely adorable little fungus gnat trap. Mine are so well and I worry they don't have enough food now. I um, I don't know what kind of carnivorous plant that is. 
Is it like a sticky one or a pitcher one? The pitcher ones you can feed fish food, which Aaron reminded me of. So I have been doing that. If you say hello to me more than once, I'm going to block you because I assume that you're a spammer. Uh, da, da, da. Would a Brita pitcher work? I don't actually know. I think it would be probably better than no filter if you have like hard water and stuff. Let me make sure. Hey, buddy, your dad's here. I know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did I miss the message forever? Mm, I love you. Stream yard. Have a good weekend. What's with that? Stream yard. What's with the stream yard? Yeah, the little thing. Oh, it's because I, I don't pay for it. I think I can actually shut that stream yard logo off Why? and I just forgot about it. Hold on. What? Why are you? That's a good point. Is there a reason you're doing that? Why can't you just use um, Streamlabs? Um, because I know this one and I like this one. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember if I tried Streamlabs. Oh, it's, that's OBS, right? That's yeah, Streamlabs OBS. Yeah. yeah, I didn't use that because it wasn't playing well with um, YouTube for a little while. Oh, yeah, they do that. And also, the only problem I figured out is that for some reason alerts don't work. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's because of my Twitch or anything like that. but Could be. Pretty sure I just given up on streaming at this point. Yeah. Yeah. It's useless. It's pointless. I don't have a following. Well, you'll get one. Not really. You figure it out. You're a kid. You don't need a following. Right. Bye. <laughs> Bye, buddy. I stopped buying distilled water at the start of the panorama. I'm assuming you mean pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it sucks having to buy it, um, especially with the carnivorous plants, because they really don't like their water to have minerals and stuff in it. So, like, I get very anxious when I don't have the water that they need. Okay, I start stuffing these trays or I'm never going to get it done. There we go. Have a good weekend, bud. Now well, we have entered the uh, hi honey, I've entered the two hours a week that I am in the house alone. <laughs> I used to have like the whole weekend to myself, and I got so much done. That's okay. <laughs> Careful going on the stairs. What? Be careful on the stairs. Careful, yeah. Man, this soil mix just doesn't feel very damp. Still it's kind of annoying. I think I'll water these again before I plant. Cocoa is not my ideal starting mix, but alas, it is more sustainable. That is Audrey Hepburn behind me. That was like a cheap little Target thing that I had. God, I think when I first moved out, I bought that. <laughs> it was kind of the, uh, this was the throwaway room in the house for quite a while because I had the two rabbits and they take up so much space. I just put them in here and then put the cat box in here. And then there was like storage shelves, you know, so it was just like the miscellaneous room. And I have slowly kind of had to turn it half and you can see the rabbit's cage next to me. <laughs> so I had to turn this into a bit of a planting studio and workspace and filming area. So it's been, uh, it's been fun. You know, I gotta clean the litter box before I sit down for the day and, you know, high class joint. We're running around here. <laughs> yeah. I love Audrey Hepburn. She was a, a, a good person, a good soul. Um, I have another, I have like the Ikea, you know, the uh, the iconic Ikea Audrey Hepburn print over here too on the other side. Kind of had a theme going unintentionally <laughs> in the throwaway room. Eventually I'm going to paint this room and make this little area look a little more like a set. And what I do is I just flip to the other side of the table when I want to edit and stuff because the lights will be behind me. It works. <laughs> Making it work. 
going insane with Brian going to the office to work so long all week, but then on his days off, I'm not used to sharing the space. So I'm like, go back to work. Exactly. That's me. I'm like, well, oh, I want everybody to come home. And then everybody comes home and I'm like, why is everybody bothering me? <laughs> it's terrible. I get, uh, I get talked out very easily. Like my son will talk to me about like video games or whatever. And he'll, you know, he talks very quickly. So he'll just kind of be talking like rapid fire at me sometimes for a while. And I'm just like, whoa, <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I, I cannot wait to be able to go out of the house again. And I am not an out of the house person really, but um, boy, I'm ready. I miss my friends. <laughs> I miss restaurants. Uh, I miss shopping and not being scared. I miss my health not being entirely in the hands of dumb people a lot of the time. Hello, Three Musketeers Homestead. Welcome. Welcome. I don't do the lives as often as I ought to, so I'm glad you've made it. Good evening from the UK. Hello. Oh, you have an allotment. Do you have an allotment channel? Is that what is that what's going on over there? Because um, I love allotment channels. I love the whole concept of an allotment. I know it came from like uh, here, give the poor something, but um, you know, modern day, pretty cool. <laughs> it's a pretty cool thing y'all do over there that we don't really do that here. We have community gardens where you can like rent plots and stuff, which would be like the same thing. But it, I feel like it's. Um, like you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like in the UK you have allotments like year to year and you get to keep them. And I, th I don't think, I don't know if it, that's the way it works around here. I think you just kind of get whatever plot every year. Very cool. I'm going to check your channel out. I think that's rad. I, um, I love having the garden right outside. That's definitely very nice, but it's cool that people can rent these like it's, it's almost like renting your own little yard somewhere and then I seen um I watching one the other day I can't remember the name of the channel but she had like a little like a little creek running through her allotment I was like that is so cool you can keep it for life if you want that's so cool so cool and then I imagine they must get like handed down too in that sense right plus if you move you don't lose your garden unless you really move like far. <laughs> it does hurt me a little bit, just the, the thought of putting, um, cause I wanna put in like fruit bushes and things like that, that I'm probably not going to get to enjoy. I hope anyway, I don't wanna be stuck here forever, <laughs> but it's kind of nice to know that, you know, I'll be leaving something cool behind, even though I have a feeling that they will mow it all down when I leave. The um, rentals around here, they really just love like bare mowed lawn and like some ugly ass shrubs. And that's it. <laughs> Nobody is into like nice landscaping here. Hello, Jessica. Welcome. New Zealand. We have a very international audience right now. I love going live during my daylight hours because I actually get to catch everybody new to growing veggies and herbs, etc. inside. So once we can plant here in Chicago, do we transfer them from indoor to outdoor? Okay, so once we can plant outside here. Okay, so what you're gonna do, what zone are you, do you know? If you don't know your USDA grow zone, that's a good place to start. Um, generally, it, I know in my zone, I'm in 6B, right on the border of 7A. I have like a weird microclimate where I am, but most of my state is 6A and 6B. Um, and we tend to plant outside around, um, is it Memorial Day? What is that holiday? That's a, I'm so bad with the, the Monday holidays. I can never remember which one is which. Um, I believe it's Memorial Day or right after Mother's Day. Actually, that's what it is. I think it's Mother's Day that people use around here. Um, for me, I will, what I do is, um, because I have a lot of, you have your cool veggies, right? And then you have your tender veggies. So your cool veggies would be um, some lettuces, not all of them. Um, romaines are more cold hardy. So you could start with romaines, um, kales, chards, um, cabbages, 
those are all like cool, hardy plants. So those I tend to put out like three, four weeks before my last frost date. And then even after my last frost date for about two weeks, it's a little iffy because like sometimes we just get really late snowstorms because it's crazy here. Um, so I kind of have two different go outside dates. I have my cool crop go outside date and then my tender crop go outside date, which is more like June 1st. Um, and then you're gonna wanna harden things off, which means if you've started your plants indoors and just a little tip, if you do do that and you have like a, a light fan, if you turn a fan on them, you will strengthen your seeds up a little bit so the hardening off process won't be so traumatic. But what you wanna do is, um, once it starts getting warm during the day, you're gonna take your seed trays outside and put them in the shade for like an hour, maybe. Um, keep an eye on them, make sure they don't get fried or anything, but you wanna put them in the shade. And then you do that again the next day for a little longer. And then you do it in a little bit longer and then you kind of move them more into the sun and you're basically just getting them gradually used to outside. Um, and then that way you do not deal with dampening off, which will kill your plants, <laughs> will kill them dead and um they'll be a little bit stronger so it, it's it's very that is a very important step and sometimes people rush them and then they'll put everything outside and then everything will be dead 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 so and i'm going to as we go through the season so if you're close to my zone i can't always think you might have said like so blind i can barely see my computer which is literally two feet away from my face um Sorry if you said and I can't see. Oh, 5B, okay. Um, yeah, so you're a little bit cooler than I am. So you're, you'll probably, your tender veggies, I wouldn't put them out before June 1st, at least. And you can kind of go by your weather and feel it out too. And as we go through this, I'm gonna keep making videos and um, so you guys will see it. And actually it's perfect for you because you're colder, you're gonna be doing everything like maybe a week or two behind me. So you can, you know, I'll try to keep the videos up to date so you'll be able to, to kind of go along. But um, what I do personally is I will, I have grow lights in here so I can actually grow my plants indoors a lot longer than people. So I don't know what kind of indoor setup you've got going. But um, for example, if you were doing um, tomatoes and you have like a smaller grow light, nothing too crazy, right? Um, I would only start them maybe like four weeks ahead of time because you don't want the plant to get really big under like kind of small lights. They'll end up getting leggy and a little weak. Um, you can plant tomato plants down like in their stem and they'll root out from the stem, which is not the case for all veggies, just so you know. But um, so you can kind of fix like a leggy tomato, but it's just good to have to get them out as, as small as kind of possible without them being so small that they'll be, you know, squashed. But because I have the big lights, I can start them like six to eight weeks ahead of time and I'll be able to sustain the, the growth and just pot them up and stuff. And that gives me a little bit of a head start, which is nice. Oh, cool. My friend just texted me to let me know that Philosophy Tube has come out as trans. Congratulations, that's a good channel. Um, yeah. Hi, Pam. <laughs> I saw you here earlier. You use the Farmer's Almanac by any chance. I, um, I do use their website. I, I've never actually like purchased it. Um, I think because I live in New England, I'm so jaded that nobody could possibly ever predict what our weather will be like. But I think they were pretty spot on last year from what I saw. Um, although nobody saw that May snowstorm coming. That was <laughs> adorable. <laughs> Just picture me outside in the wind, like, ah, ah, trying to, like, put the cover back on my low tunnel. <laughs> it's horrible. It was so pissed. That, like, really broke me. And we were into quarantine at that point, too. And I was already kind of losing it a little bit. Do, do, do. Going back. Oh, yes. Sorry. People didn't know what an allotment was. My fault. Uh, yes, yeah, like a, a community garden space over here in the States. Yes, hardening off. Very important. Very important. You basically want to make sure that your seeds are as tough as they possibly can be and have been under the least amount of stress as possible. And I've found that where I've gone wrong um, a lot of the time starting seeds indoors is just, um, you know, I would forget to water. And now I'm looking at my seedlings like, do they need water? Um, I would forget to water and 
you know, that's, that is like house plants can take a little bit of that seedlings cannot. And even if they sort of perk back up, you've sort of already just kind of, you, you, you cut them at the knees a little bit just by stressing them out so early in their life. And then you gotta you figure you gotta do the hardening off and then you gotta transplant them. And it's just a lot of fucking stress for a little tiny plant, you know? <laughs> so you just have to try to keep them um, as happy and evenly moist, not too wet, like a wrung out sponge is what they say. Yes, the Canadian winters, yeah. Yeah, no joke up there. <laughs> Definitely no joke up there. Uh, what, sir? Would you like to come say hi? No, you just want to root around in my dirt. I know what you're trying to do. Can you come say hi? No? I'm going to eat my seed packets instead? Please don't. Please don't. Please don't. That's it. No. He doesn't listen very well. Huge amount of light and consistent terms are important for strong, short, stout plants. Yes. Alliteration. I love it. <laughs> People transplant their plants when they are way too large. Yes. And that was a big mistake that I made um, the first year. And that's why any gardening channel you watch is always going to be like, do not start your seeds too early because it's a big problem. If you start your seeds too early, they're going to get so big. And now they're kind of root bound. So you're stressing them out there. And especially with peppers, um, that was why I always had such poor luck with peppers. And I had no idea it was because at some point during the growing process, they'd become root bound. And even though I repotted them later on, they, you know, the, the plant already got the message like, well, this is it. This is, this is all we got here. So pack it up, <laughs> start making some flowers. So um, if you've had trouble with, things like that happening or things don't seem to get as big as they were. It's probably because at some point they got uh, root bound and it stunted their growth. Which veggies would you suggest to start indoors in February for a container gardening? So um, what zone are you in Sophie? Did you tell me already? I'm sorry. I fucking brain worms. Um, so yeah, let me know what zone you're in. Uh, for me, I think you already told me. Um, no, you didn't. Okay. Matching things. Um, so for me, again, I'm 6B, 7A ish. Um, February for me is super hot peppers. Um, oh, you're in Belgium. So you have no idea. Okay. Um, what's your, uh, temperature and stuff like right now? Like what's the, I don't know, Belgium. You don't have a, I'm trying to, my geography sucks. I know where Belgium is ish, but I don't know um, climate wise how different that is. I think you can look it up, but I believe that um, if you were to follow UK gardening, you'd be around the same ish. UK people help me out. I can Google in a second and get my hands clean. But for me right now, um, I am, so, well, let's think of it in terms of your last frost. So you need to figure out when your last expected frost is. So Belgium is like 8A, okay. Um, so yeah, you're warmer than me then. So you could be probably starting a lot of stuff right now. Pretty much anything, I think. You should be able to do your tenders if you're in that-ish zone. Um, so you basically want to figure out when your last expected frost is. So that's not a guarantee, of course, but it'll give you an idea. And then a lot of times the packets will tell you like your time to maturity. It'll say like days to maturity. Just keep in mind that that tends to be after you've transplanted it out. So that's not maybe not counting the three, four weeks or more that you need to grow them out before you transplant. Um, so you basically just have to like count back with the information that you have on your like varieties and then that will give you sort of an idea of what you need to start and then when it needs to go outside it's around 15th of may last expected for us so you're not too far off from me then because that's about my technically my last expected frost um is god what do my dates say some of them say the end of april and then a lot of people treat May 1st as like more of my last one. So yeah, you're not too far behind me. So you could start probably, let's see, that's two weeks, April 4th, that's six weeks. 
March. So you're looking at like the 10, 12 weeks zone. So anything that says that you need to start at 10 to 12 weeks out, did I do my math right? Um, so that would be a lot of flowers, um, a lot of herbs. So you could start uh, slower growing herbs for sure. I have uh, mint started already because that tends to take a little while. Um, I have started sage, started onions. You might be a little... Yeah, you probably start some onions. Yeah, I think this is a lot of stuff that you could start. I wouldn't start your um, tomatoes yet or your eggplant or any kind of squash. Um, squash tends to take like four, you know, you want to get that outside in like three, four weeks if you even, you know, you can direct transplant that. Probably a lot easier than starting indoors, but I start a lot of stuff indoors because I am a control freak. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Hi, you make a better door than a window. I'm not going to dig in my pots. The other day when I was planting, he ran right across my tray and just like punched down all this soil in like every little pot he stepped in. I was like, Arr! after I put the seeds in them, of course. Um, sir, that's my laptop. We don't step on that. Hello, Heather. How are you? How are things? My zone in Ontario, Canada is 6A, first frost date, November 1st, last is May 1st, if anyone else is in my area. And I feel like a couple of websites have like two different frost dates for me too. And like one of them is really optimistic. I'm like, hmm, that's, that's not true. <laughs> Brighten it up and yeah, it's getting dark. Last year, cucumbers grew so fast from seed. Yeah, definitely, definitely. If you're going to transplant those out, I'd do like two, three weeks tops. Um, I definitely, I tried to direct seed quite a few things last year that were very like, you know, don't ever transplant these. And it didn't fucking work. <laughs> so like, I don't know, I'm just going to go with what works. And sometimes, sometimes I transplant things that they say not to. I have not grown any mushrooms yet. I would love to do that though. I have turkey tails that grow outside um, on the log out there, but I'm I'm so terrified of killing myself with mushrooms that I haven't I haven't ventured to use them yet. But I've had a couple people be like, "Those are turkey tails." You are in uh, let's see, British Columbia, Okanagan, Okanagan. Did I say that right? Canada, general rule is May long weekend. Everything can go outside if anyone is around here. Check out Future Cannabis Project channel. Does that say future? Yes, sorry, I'm so blind. <laughs> I need to get new glasses. Mine don't, I don't think that they put the center in the right place because they hurt my head a lot. <laughs> so I'll have to squint at all of you. I will check that channel out though. Remind me at the end though, because I'll probably forget. Winter sowed all my peppers, eggplants, tomatoes, but I'm in 10A, hoping I'm not too early. You should be okay, I think. I'm pretty sure. Winter sowing is a great trick too, and that's something I would really like to just do a dedicated live on, um, you know, one where I plan <laughs> and announce it ahead of time. Uh, but I would like to, to get people um, up to speed on that if they've never done the winter sewing method and I've watched quite a few um, little webinars about it and stuff and I only watched one that was really helpful I feel like a lot of times I don't know just I haven't found very good information there's definitely more videos on winter sewing this year than there were last year that I found very helpful I have one as well already but I wouldn't mind doing like a live about it and winter sewing is if you don't know if you're in the chat and you have no idea what I'm talking about um, you can either direct winter sow, which a lot of people do. Um, I was watching The Impatient Gardener, I think, the other day, and she was like, I have no idea why anybody would do the jugs. That's more work and blah, blah, blah. But the jugs for me is, like, way easier than hoping that the seeds stay where I put them um, in my yard because it's just, like, the weather is too wet here over the winter. Um, but winter sowing is when you take a milk jug. I don't know if I have any, don't have any on hand right now, but you take, like, a milk jug, Got my water jug over here. And you're gonna uh, start where the handle is and you cut around here 
all the way around to the other side where the handle is. Sorry, hitting the mic, but you're gonna leave a little bit here uncut and it makes like a hinge so you can open it up. And then you're gonna put holes in the bottom for drainage, lots of holes. And then some people put some holes around the top for ventilation as well. And then you're filling the bottom half with soil, putting your seeds in there, making sure it's all watered and everything. You're gonna shut it, duct tape where you cut, you leave the cap off the top, so no cap, and then you put it outside and you forget it exists. Well, you might wanna check it because sometimes you have to water them, but um, for the most part, if you live in like a place where it's you know, damp over the winter, you might not even have to water them at all. I would keep an eye on them, but I found if they're right sitting on the ground in the soil, they don't need as much water as they did when I had them on a table or like on the pavement. But um, people use that method both for perennials that need cold stratification, like we were talking about earlier, which means that they need a period of time where they are freezing and thawing um, in order for that seed to understand that it needs to germinate. And that's nature's way of keeping them from germinating in the fall when they, they fall off the plant, you know, in pretty temperate weather. So if they didn't have that programmed into them, they would just, they'd all just germinate and then get killed by the first frost. So instead the seed knows that it needs to freeze and thaw and freeze and thaw and freeze. And then when it's warm again, now it's time to go. So people will use winter sowing to germinate, um, you know, perennials or like lavender, um, anything that needs cold stratification. And then you can, I basically use the seed chunk method, which I just kind of pulled the clump apart once it was all germinated in the spring. Once they germinate too, you want to start leaving the lid open. Same thing with the seed trays. You don't want to keep the dome on after there's a lot of leaves or they'll get mildewy. Um, but it works really good. And I think I put out probably 15 jugs last year and I think all but two germinated. And then the two that didn't germinate ended up germinating in the fall. Uh, right as I was cleaning up the garden, I was like, guys, you had one job. <laughs> like, well, um, but I went on that rant because I saw their comment about winter sowing tomatoes and stuff. You can do that with tender plants as well. So when you were putting out your cold hardy veggies, so like four weeks before that, you know, that um, safe to plant your tender veggies date, which for me would be like June 1st. Um, so on, you know, the very end of April, I could winter sow some tomatoes and peppers and put them outside in the jugs. And there's a pretty good chance as soon as the weather is correct for that seed to germinate, it'll germinate outside. And then the advantage there is that you don't have to do the hardening off thing. Um, you don't have to have grow lights. You don't have to have heat mats. <laughs> you don't have to have any, you know, it's, it's the ultimate, um, poor man's way of growing a lot of stuff from seed. And it's really fun. I had a great time last year. I couldn't, I couldn't even believe, like I'd seen that it worked for all these people. Obviously, like I know that's the thing that works. People have been doing it for a long time, but when it worked, I was like, oh, it worked. <laughs> Hand pollinating plants. Yes. Pam, did you leave me a comment about that? I want to say somebody asked me about that. I think it was you. Um, Michigan is so iffy about frost. I had to leave stuff in my greenhouse for two extra weeks last year. Yeah, the last year was crazy. And the good thing about the winter sowing too, another thing that was an advantage last year was that once my stuff germinated, we had that last, that really late snowfall in May. It was so weird. Um, I was able to pull all the jugs out of the yard, put them in the basement and they were fine. <laughs> you know, so like I wouldn't have been able to do that if I had direct sown them in the garden, I would have had to try to frost cover them or do something like that, which in my experience doesn't work super good. So, <laughs> so hand pollinating, um, if you were doing like, I, I, I only hand pollinated last year, my squash plants when they first popped up because um, in the springtime, I didn't have as many pollinators as I did by the end of the year when I had tons of them. Um, so I was hand pollinating just to make sure I got a few squashes before the um, here in New England, you basically, if you don't get an early squash and then like plant it ASAP and take really good care of it and then like harvest it really, really fast, you're going to get pottery mildew everywhere and you're just not going to get any squash. It sucks. I hate it. And we have squash bugs too and it sucks. So um, last year I was trying to rapidly speed up the process of getting some squash. So I hand pollinated um, with a little paintbrush and it's super easy. You just, um, you have to learn to identify the male and female flowers, obviously, once you once you look it up, you'll know it forever. Um, they look vaguely inappropriate. Um, so, the, so the one that looks like a cervix 
is the female. Um, and you're you're just gonna, I did it with my finger a bunch of times. I just like stuck my finger in the male flower and got a bunch of pollen on my finger and then you shove it in the female flower and you give it a little wet willy and you're good to go. <laughs> That's pretty much it. And uh, like tomatoes and peppers are mostly self-pollinating. Um, the wind helps, you can shake the, if you shake the cages on the way by, that will help a lot. So I did that as well. Best flowers for native pollinators. I'm in Southern Ontario, Canada. So you're not far from me. So we probably have some similar ones. Um, so I have in my yard, uh, Maximilian sunflower is an excellent one. Um, Maximilian like the name. And that is like a little yellow um, sunflower and it gets like a whole bunch of them. So it's just, it's actually a nice cutting flower too. But that one attracts damn near every beneficial insect that there is and they self seed so they will i've had mine for two years now they didn't spread a ton but they do get bigger every year and they're very tall so you got to put them where like you're okay with having like 10 foot plants because they're enormous but those are fantastic um what else did really well the um purple vervain um that does incredible with the, with the pollinators. Um, zinnias, you'll get tons of butterflies um, and bees. And then what else did I plant last year that was crazy good? Um, alyssum, really great for like hoverflies. So are a lot of those. Um, those are not native though. So I don't think I kind of got sidetracked. Native, other natives. Uh, did I say purple vervain? That's valerian, right? No, not vervain. Valerian, not Valerian. Um, what's the other word for that plant? It's driving me crazy. It's gonna bother me. Somebody will know. <laughs> I have more tomato seeds than I could ever need. Were you here in the uh, in the in the feed earlier when I was reading off all my tomato seeds? We could talk tomato seeds. So hit me up on social. <laughs> Verbena. Thank you. Oh my God, that was driving me nuts. <laughs> Look, it's the other V word. Yes, verbena, excellent, excellent, and beautiful, super pretty. Thyme, really great for bees too. Bees and hoverflies really like thyme flowers. I have a big patch of thyme, and that, that uh, naturalizes quite easily, and it's not native, I don't think, but I'm pretty sure that's European. Hello in Finland. I think of what other natives I did last year. Um, obviously milkweed. Milkweed is fantastic. That gets you your uh, your monarchs, um, but also other other pollinators as well. Um, but my milkweeds have brought me um, great joy because the monarchs are just gorgeous. So pretty when they come in. Finally, it takes them a while to get to my neck of the woods, but once they do, I'm ready for them. And what else did I plant? I don't think of the other ones I have out there. I have um, Rudbeckia, obviously. I have the native version of Rudbeckia out there, and that does pretty well. Mm. I have my, my foxgloves are going to come up this year. Wicked excited. I, I winter sowed those last year, and those are biennials, so they did not flower for me last year. It will be flowering for me this spring and I am stoked. And then I'm going to start more this year so that next year I'll have them too. Butterfly bush is good. I don't think, is that native? I don't think butterfly bush is native. I remember looking that up and being really surprised that it wasn't, but those are great for pollinators. Like excellent. I mean, everything doesn't have to be native. I do very much believe um, if you're going to garden that it's it's great if you can do a little bit of restoration gardening where you're like putting in some native plants and things that you're and it's only going to do you well i mean your your bugs and everything will be so much happier if there is native food for them because they they definitely have a preference and even like a lot of the really fun varieties of things that i'm growing this year they're fun but they're you know i, I i'm willing to bet that the pollinators will favor the native varieties and I don't blame them. <laughs> We're growing Optunia. Op, Optun, Op, is that the cactus? Am I just like looking at that weird? Optu, uh, Apuntia, Apuntia, there we go. Okay, I was saying it wrong. That's why I'm like, why isn't this working in my brain? <laughs> oh, 
Well, it's smarter than I sound on, on live. Uh, <laughs> hey, Amy, building your grow tent, please. I need one of those. I have a grow tent somewhere that I put away, but it was like kind of banged up. And then all these grow light companies keep hounding me to take their lights and review them and all this crap. Well, they don't want me to review them. They want me to just promote them. But I tell them when I'm not going to do that, I'm going to review it. Um, but they never want to send me a goddamn tent to put the thing in. Like, send me a tent. Fuck. It's a bitch got to do. <laughs> Hello, Jamal. Peace and love. Reminds me of H3H3. H3. With peace and love. Uh, Monarch Pop is way down. Yeah, almost endangered. I know. And last year, the numbers were terrible, weren't they, Bill? I only saw um, maybe three. I, 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 it could have been two, but I thought that I saw a third one all at the same time once. Oh, here comes my water cat. Just obsessed with water. Get out of here. Don't dig in the, in the soil, please. Don't. Don't. I, I, I just hoped and hoped and hoped when I was getting a cat that I would not get a plant eater. And I got my wish. I did not get a plant eater. But I got a dirt digger, <laughs> which is much more, which is preferable. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but uh, the thing I've had to get used to is having a cat that really is just super interested in dirt being on the floor and being in his palms and just playing with it and sniffing it and he comes into the room all the time with like perlite stuck in his nose hole and stuff. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> and then of course I'll come in here and just see some beloved plant just half dug out. But I mean, at least he doesn't eat them, right? <laughs> Digging soil out won't get him dirty. Oh, good Lord. It's not really that impressive, sir. Okay, so. Now we got this thing. I think this should be moist enough. Let's hope. Let's just see if that small dick energy just dried my soil out too. <laughs> okay. Oh my God, we might be close to actually planting. Um, I do have some moderators, but I'm going to hammer up a few more if I can figure out how to oh I can't do it on here it's some okay oops sorry Bill it's like it's trying to hammer you all right let me, let me assign some new ones we don't usually get a lot of trolls here but the children do come about here and there okay. there we go all right, y'all on deck. So, we are ready to plant. Holy shit. It's taking me 40 million years. I really feel like this starting medium is going to suck. I, like, I'm not confident, so I'm definitely going to fill the top of this with vermiculite. Where did I put my vermiculite? <laughs> no worries, Cody. No worries. No worries. I was uh, modding in someone else's chat the other day and I accidentally timed somebody out. I was like, oh, I, I hate this job. <laughs> I don't want to be a mod anymore. There we go. So I'm going to just shove this soil down a bit so I've got a little more room for a little extra vermiculite since clearly this is going to be an issue. These Lizzie Anthus, I think, like to be uh, did they say to do soil? I may not do the Lysianthus right now just because I think those are fussy and I need to have proper starting medium for them, but everything else should be good in this. Cats couldn't care less about the house plants, but the veggie seedlings is like crack to them. That sucks. That sucks. Um, I, I definitely, when Jamara was still alive um, last year, she was really into just trying to nibble on all of my veggie and herb seeds. She was more of a plant biter. She didn't really eat so much as she would just take a little taste, which fortunately most of the time didn't taste good, so she wouldn't keep doing it. But 
she was definitely my garden troublemaker. Now I'm going to have vermiculite all in my laptop again. My cat only wants to chop in Sony Eye. They seem to know the worst ones to go for, don't they? And then, God, I would have, um, back in the day, before, uh, you know, my people kind of found me and all the people who I don't mesh with unsubscribed. Um, I used to get a lot of shit by having houseplants that were poisonous to cats. Like, people would leave me comments all the time, like basically insinuating that I was trying to kill my cats. And um, it's just like, do you, I mean, for the love of God, I have had plants and cats since I was a baby. <laughs> Not ever once has a cat ever just pushed through eating a plant that tastes like disgusting battery acid poison pain, which is what poison plants tend to fucking taste like. Um, now, more often than not, the statistics about cats eating plants and dying come from cut flowers. So if anybody's doing the cut flower garden this year and you have kitties, that's the thing you're going to want to consider. Also, the fact that they can bring pests into your house plants. It's another thing I learned. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like, it's just, yeah. And, and then I see people give, oh my God, poor Harley G. When she, I remember when she was, um, first announced she was pregnant, that people were like, why are you going to get rid of all your poisonous plants? What are you going to do? They were just like all upper ass sideways about it. And I'm like, do you do this to your friends or is it just because like we're on a screen? So you think you can just like, you know, like unwanted, like mother in law or something? Like, I don't, I don't understand why people think that's appropriate. Not to mention people have had plants and pets and kids and plants and like you just say don't fucking eat that. And then you watch the, the, the children and pets that you're in charge of. Like it's really not that complicated. I'm actually planning to do a video uh, pretty soon about just like the things that I've figured out that help with the keeping the cats for the most part out of my house plants. It's not a foolproof method at all, but um, sweetie, you're not large. Cause if you were, you wouldn't be in here doing this. You would be sleeping with women. <laughs> Come on. Uh, do men really not know what compensation looks like? Like they don't, right? Like they're not, are they just not aware? Is it like a straight man thing or? Like, what is it? <laughs> like, you can't actually believe that, right? Probably a child, honestly. Um, <laughs> I like to believe they're children. I, I really do. Like, I, I, I almost need to believe that it's a child. I need to. I, I kind of think I need to believe that. So we're just going to go with that. It's probably a child. <laughs> I just would hate to think that any adult at this point would be that sad. But, you know, it happens. It happens. The Internet is a sad and depressing place a lot of the time. I have been, uh, I don't know if anybody has really noticed, but I've been largely absent from Instagram. I kind of post a couple stories a day and then just disappear um, because I just I can't. I just can't. <laughs> Can't, can't be on Twitter. Uh, I can't I can't just be like absorbing everybody's like anger all the time. And like we've all been trapped in the house, so you know everybody's being like sometimes their worst self on the internet a little bit more than usual. So I know I do need a funnel. You like that though? I didn't spill like any of it. <laughs> I do have a funnel somewhere. I just want to keep getting up. <laughs> yeah, it's just these just bad people sometimes, but a lot of times they're just you know nothing else going on and that just kind of makes me feel bad more than angry it is annoying to have to keep throwing people out of a chat though because i've got nothing better to do like bitch we trying to talk about seeds here this alone um this is also why i tend to go live on instagram a lot more so if you are on instagram and you don't follow me i am on instagram i think my handle's in my drop down box right now um we do lives a lot more often there because there's just you know less access to the unmanaged 12 year olds of the world i regularly tell my son like if i ever find out that you do this i'm gonna cut your computer cord in half <laughs> just so you know i know 
<laughs> Alexa plays Short Dick Man by Gillette. <laughs> I love that song so much. It's such a good song. I have never grown moringa. I did have a friend, um, and I forgive me if I just said that completely wrong. Um, I had a friend send me some cuttings, and unfortunately, they froze to death on the way up here. But um, I would like to keep seeing seeds. Hey, Chanel, you didn't miss it. I know Adam gets it. That is like, that's a personal, like somebody's harassing him and that it, it man, what I would not give for just, I just want to talk, you know, just want to talk to that person for a little while alone. Cause Adam is literally just the best human being and does not deserve any harassment whatsoever, let alone that kind of harassment. But it sucks because it does like it runs people off doing this kind of stuff. And especially whereas I absolutely cannot keep up with my DMs anymore, no matter how hard I try. Um, this is kind of the best way that I can talk to you guys, like without having to, uh, you know, sit in front of the phone for hours on end. I just have like a starting to get like bad elbow and shoulders from like holding my phone. So I'm trying to put it down more. We've been enjoying watching a lot of your gardening videos from the last year. I ended up ordering a lot of seeds, even though I already had too many. I'm sorry about that. I've done that to a lot of people. <laughs> I feel bad. Sometimes I'm just like, I hate that term, like the, the influencer term, but I'm like, I do though. I do that to people. I'm trying to, I'm going to try to fix the light here because it's like a real, real shitey right now. A little more. It's just like the camera is just correcting things it doesn't need to correct. Stop it. Mm, irritating. I need to figure out how to use my proper camera to do this. Hello. Hello. Oh, thank you. Hello. <laughs> Seeds are not scary. You don't have to be scary. All right, listen. This is the thing. If you're doing this for the first time, a, don't plant all your seeds the first time. So you're going to break it up into maybe half. Start half. See how it goes. If you screw everything up, start over with the other half. Most of the, depending on where you are, I know for me, like I could even screw up tomatoes and still be able to plant more, you know, starting in like May and then have them reach the end of the season. So it's low stakes, I promise. Oh my God, thank you, Katie. That's so nice. Oh, I need to see your sticker. Hold on. And they don't show me on the thingy. Oh, cute. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. You don't have to do that. That is very, very nice. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's not as hard as it seems. And you know what? You're gonna fuck up. Like you're gonna you're gonna make mistakes. Like that's how you learn. Like who cares? And you know what? Like. And I won't say like, oh, it's a pack of seeds. It's only a few bucks. That's no big deal because I don't, I don't know. Maybe a few bucks is a big deal for some folks. Um, so you don't want to like waste your money. And I totally get that. Um, so what you're going to do is while you're shopping for seeds, try to find some that have a good, you know, don't go buying, go buying the four seeds in a package for $4. So you have some room to play and then, you know, just take it easy, take it slow, keep notes. Notes are really helpful. Even if you just take pictures on your phone that you could look back at. Um, but yeah, and start with like lettuce. You know, can't really can't really screw that up too much. You can you can forget to water it and kill it, but then you can start some more and it sprouts really fast, and then you have more lettuce. Okay, I think I'm gonna get this party started. I got some spinach here. I don't think it's too late for me to start you. Maybe I'll do that. And I've got some walla walla onions. I've got some red burgundy onions and I've got some Chinese cabbage, which I'm going to start. And I know I'm not going to get to eat this. I know I'm not. I know the pests are going to get it. Um, but I'm going to plant that out of sheer stubbornness. Um, and then if you're planting onions, something I learned the hard way um, is that you need to pay attention to whether it is a long season onion or a short season onion. Um, or in it or the middle one that doesn't really matter. I don't remember what the term for it is, but um, 
But it turns out that if you're in the north, you need the long day onions. And if you're in the south, you need the short day onions. And I picked up short day onions first by accident because onions bulb according to how much daylight they have. So there's a certain amount of hours of daylight. They go, oh, okay, time to bulb. Um, so if you don't give them that, then they're not gonna bulb. Uh, so yeah, I'm still learning, still learning things. Let's see. Go in thinking everything wants to and is determined to grow. Yes, exactly. And you know what? Like if you really think about how seeds grow in the wild, when you're starting them indoors, you're you're kind of giving them a, a whole lot more than they're probably used to. So you're going to be okay. You will be okay. I've, I have screwed. I've had probably last year was my first successful garden and there were plenty of problems with it and plenty of things that I need to do differently this year. But I would say last year was my first like successful garden where I grew multiple things all the way to the end. I got fruit, I got harvest. Um, I did get fruit and harvest the year before in containers, but everything was so sick and just, it just didn't, you know, like I did good with like greens and stuff like that last year. Um, and then the three years before that were kind of catastrophes besides like lettuce and things that like that. Um, but yeah. Oh yes. You can see the tray. Yes. So here, oop, I just knocked two over. Okay. <laughs> Here's what we got going here. So I just have like little piles of vermiculite on here. And if you missed me say it, that is just to help maintain some moisture because my um, I'm kind of improvising on the seed starting mix today. I just have some cocoa mix that I snatched from my fella. And um, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna work on that. And then um, another little little tippy, um, if you're starting out, is if you have very small seeds, um, bottom watering is usually recommended so that you don't float all your seeds around and stuff. Um, I almost always bottom water these trays when I can, but a lot of times um, because I wake up and it's kind of an emergency situation and like eat, I don't really have time. <laughs> so that's when this little sprinkler. Uh, bottle thing that we have here becomes how we water. <laughs> you ordered a shiz ton of seeds, planted almost all of them, was super excited, and then most of the plants died. Yep, been there. Been there. Definitely been there. I collected seeds last year for the first time, and all I and all I know, none of them are going to germinate. Just got to dive in, I guess. If you have a lot too, like if you have a good amount and you want to just for your own curiosity, um, take like 10 of them and put them on a wet paper towel and do like the wet paper towel germinating on a plate thing. You just put like um, like a layer or two of wet paper towels, put the seeds in there, another little layer or two of wet paper towels, and then put like a piece of saran wrap over it. Just kind of keep an eye on it. And then... Um, you know, depending on what kind of seed it is, within a few days, it will start to send out the little root. And then you can sort of, if you have 10 seeds and eight of them germinated, then you can kind of roughly assume that you have like an 80% germination. And then if none of them germinate, then you maybe save yourself a little time <laughs> and a little heartache, or you at least are able to manage your expectations. Have you ever grown any house plants from grocery store fruits? I tried clementine, carambola, dragon fruit. Oh, it's so cool. I actually did, I grew a lemon um, from a seed. And this was, God, know, 10 years ago now. So definitely like before um, I really knew a lot about plants. And I think that if I had known a lot about plants, I'd probably still have the thing because it really it lived for like a year and a half. And if you've ever tried to grow citrus indoors, you know that, Sometimes that can be a little challenging. Um, so I was pretty excited that it worked out as well as it did. Um, but unfortunately I lost it and I've, I have not tried it since. I, I would like to um, do the avocado at some point, just, just because Scott grows an avocado tree, makes me excited about growing an avocado at some point. And what I will always do is I'll save the pit and I'll clean it off and I'll put it on my counter and I'll be like, later on, later on you and me and then it never happens. <laughs> Taro is coming back this year from produce section. Nice. That's awesome. I want to grow ginger this year too. I'm going to, um, I'm going to purchase some um, ginger from fruition seeds. They are um, very, very um, meticulous and dedicated to their ginger. So I know I can grow it from a rhizome from wherever, but I want to get 
bear ginger and give it like a real good head start because I love ginger and I really like to get into making fire ciders and stuff like that. So, and man, I'm getting another juicer this year because my juicer broke a couple years ago and I miss apple ginger carrot juice in the morning so much. Oh, it's so good. And beet juice. I don't know if, if, if anyone has ever had like a cup of like beet, ginger, you know, something juice, like some kind of juice combination with beet and ginger in it. But um, you can feel that shit go straight to your brainstem. <laughs> it's, it's fucking great. Tried with an avocado pit last year. I have a baby tree now. Yay. Sophie, do you know Scott grows an avocado tree on YouTube? He has a whole channel. <laughs> <laughs> dedicated to growing avocado trees and other stuff. But um, yeah, it's the nichest plant channel that I know. And it's fantastic. Very high quality, both in human being and production. You're welcome. Heather's had an avocado tree for a couple years, put it through hell. So it lost all its leaves many times and it's still pretty small. Yeah, I get the feeling they're probably a little fussy, right? I mean, they want to be like outdoor plants. This is my first time growing onions from seed, this kind of onion anyway, grown scallions, obviously, but um, we'll see how this goes. Have any of you guys grown onion from seed? How did it go? Let me know. Hi, Rose. How are you? I don't know why, but really late last night I was laying in bed and you popped into my head and I was like, oh, I fucking missed that live yoga. I meant to do that day. <laughs> I can't remember what something happened that day. It was like chaos and I, I missed it. Um, I think I was, I think my kid made me stressed. I can't remember. <laughs> I don't know why it just like popped into my head last night. I was like, oh my God, I was going to do that like a week and a half ago. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Dingus. So it was great outside in the summer, and then I wind up neglecting it too much and bring it in. Yeah, that's got to be rough. I, I think I want, I, I imagine with all these really dope grow lights that I have, I could probably maintain a fruiting tree pretty well under one of them. So I would like to try it again. Um, I really need to, <laughs> I hate to say it, but I kind of need to downsize my house plants a little bit. Um, either that or I need to install a green wall or just something that where I can kind of consolidate things a little bit better because, um, Oh man, I, I'm getting stressed. I uh, <laughs> just trying to like make everything fit and make sure it all has the amount of light that it needs. I just don't want a bunch of ailing plants, you know? Um, so I've been trying to give a, a bunch away, but I'm at that point where it's like, I have almost 200 and I love every single one of them. <laughs> and a lot of them like, have, you know, some kind of memory or a sentimental value attached to them. And like, I want to keep them all. I just don't have enough room. I need a bigger place to live. Um, but that's not going to happen. So what are you doing yoga tonight? What time? How many hours from now since we were in time zones? I don't know how many of these onions I want to do. I have so many seeds. I wish I had more pots. I would just do trays and trays of them. Oh, shit. Is this the right onion? Oh, no. Okay, I think this is the one I was just planting. <laughs> Let's hope so. Let me get my tags. Another cool thing I picked up, I, I'm going to have to report back on whether it actually works. I've heard mixed reviews. Is I got this UV marker, supposedly supposed to ward off the UV fading of your garden markers. I'm skeptical, but we'll we'll see. Hi, Amanda. Welcome. Any tips for beginning veggie growers? Absolutely. Starting them early. So Rose, we can, we can also chat. Um, we were talking earlier about figuring out your frost date, your last frost date, right? And then you're, you're going to think of your plants in two categories where at least for me, I have, I have like April 15th to like May 15th is sort of my first half of the uh, growing outside season. And then the um, 
May 15th to like June is when I start putting out all of my tomatoes and peppers and like the really tender stuff that cannot handle any frost whatsoever. But the stuff that is cold hardy, I tend to put out like four to six weeks before that, that frost date. So um, depending, so you want to do eggplant and aubergine. So those are tender. So you would want to do those out uh, later and make sure that you're like, you know, a good week or so, maybe two weeks past your like expected frost date if you have unpredictable weather. I admit I know nothing about your weather at all. Um, <laughs> Rose is Dutch, for anybody wondering. Right? <laughs> I always say shit and then I'm like, am I right? I'm right, right? I hate when I do that. <laughs> Before my mother in law last year. Nice. I have some really cool, um, I have like a, um, what is that eggplant that I just picked up that I'm so pumped about? Uh, a Turkish orange eggplant. Very cool. Yes, yeah, Dutch. Okay. I do know that. I'm just like, get that. I don't know if that's like an ADD thing where I, and like, my good, like, my friends, I will like say their name and then my brain goes, Are you sure that's their name? I'm like, Yeah, I've known them for years. And then my brain will go, But are you sure? And I'm like, I don't know. Am I sure? Fuck the worst <laughs> yes my mom's a planty person too um and my nana was as well my mom thinks that she's not a planty person but her house full of house plants she's a yard full of plants she is part she knows a good amount about plants but i think she's convinced that um that she's still bad at them for some reason it's like here in belgium crappy weather well maybe you guys should you guys should get together and uh <laughs> start planting some garden shit together. Living in a 100 year old school sounds fun. I used to live in an old school. Oh, cool, Jenny. We're in 100 house plants, and because of COVID, I'm staying at my parents. I'm just abusing all the space. I had an apartment that was in a converted elementary school. It was really cool, except that everybody else that lived there was not. <laughs> so I had to leave. Um, but let's see. All right. So, red. Burgundy. I always plan to like do things on live and then it takes me 37 years longer than it normally would have because I get distracted. But that's okay because we're just hanging out. What is the date? What is the date? January 30th. Okay. Oh my god, it's already January 30th. That is crazy pants. All right. Oh, I'm frozen on my phone. I'm frozen on a good face, at least. Let's see. Yeah, I'm frozen on my phone. Oh, it's because my headphones stopped. That's why. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure my parents are glad I don't live at home because then they don't have to share their very uh, meticulously landscaped area with me. <laughs> I, uh, a lot of people know, but when I first moved here, I had neighbors downstairs that had um, dogs who were very cute, but um, really just made gardening here completely impossible. And then um, between the dog poop and just like, uh, we sort of had a disagreement over um, whether or not the dog should just be allowed to run through my garden. <laughs> She'd be like, well, it's a dog. And I'm like, okay, well, that's a garden. So maybe tell your dog with your voice that it listens to, uh, and don't go in the fucking garden. We have a, a big space. Like, so it, was, it would have been very easy to uh, cohabitate with a garden, but um, it became pretty clear to me when I moved in that that was not going to happen. So I just gave up on the idea until they left. So now that is why you see the garden. You will be seeing this here because I finally have full control over my garden. And we have family living downstairs now too. We have Mike's brother. So it's really, it's so wonderful. Like, you know, when you have something terrible that you live with on a daily basis and then it goes away someday. And then after a few months, like you almost can't remember what it was like to just constantly be irritated and like not be able to use your own yard and like step in dog shit every single time that you went outside. Like, oh, it was the worst. Like peace and love. Wish you all the best, but so glad you don't live here anymore. <laughs> and I'm sure they I'm sure they feel the same. They they did not enjoy living with with me and my me and my uh, demands for consideration. 
I'm not really meant to cohabitate with other adults. <laughs> Do you know where I can send a sample out? Uh, yes, Amanda. Um, I'm not sure where you are at. I feel like I've asked you that before. Maybe you just have a familiar. No, I recognize your name. Um, so I know that for me, I can send mine to, I think it's MIT, the universities. And then if you have a, um, an ex, what are they called? An extension, like a, an extension office in your town. I don't have one. I think uh, like a, people think that's really weird. Um, apparently other cities and towns have like an agriculture extension office where you can get things like that situated. But you can also buy like kits and stuff at the store and then send them out to private um, companies that will do it for you as well. Should be like $20, $30, depending on what you get done. Um, I really need to do that. I really need to do that. I don't have, um, because I've amended the living shit out of a couple of the beds out there, including one that's like not even, um, it's a fabric, Jesus, I keep hitting this. It's a fabric raised bed. So there's like entirely, like none of my natural soil is in there. So like, I don't know, like, do you test that too? Like what's the <laughs> not really sure. I'm very overwhelmed by the concept of testing my soil, and it's probably not that complicated. Um, you know that you can test it on your own just for the makeup of your soil. Um, I think Kevin from Epic Gardening will probably have a video about it. I know it's in his book um, where you can put soil into like a jar of water and then you let it settle and you'll be able to see like what percentage of your soil is like sand or silt or whatever. Um, but I haven't done that either. <laughs> I know, how dare I? I know. I'm like, I'm so, um, I mean, maybe I'm completely delusional and I'm a terrible person to live alongside, but I'm like really considerate of other people. I try not to park in people's spaces. You know, like I will wheel their garbage over if I see that it got knocked over. Like I will walk their mail over if I get their mail. Like, and that is just not really how people work around here. And it's very strange. <laughs> It's very strange to me. I have some really nice neighbors who are who are very cool, but um, a lot of like the younger ones, especially that I've lived around, it's just like if like they won't even like tell you if they get your mail, they'll just like throw it on the porch or something. Like it's it's very I don't know common courtesy, not very common. <laughs> this is the moral of that story, I guess. Oh, you're in Massachusetts. Okay, so um, all right, let me let me let me look and see which college it is that does it because I don't want to tell you the wrong one. Um, Soil testing, Massachusetts University. Do, do, do. Okay, so you are going to go to, oh, is it UMass? You'd think I'd know I went there. Do, do, do. Uh, oh, yeah, I guess it is UMass. I don't know why I didn't think it was UMass. Um, I believe it's UMass Amherst. Okay, so... So you want to go to soiltest.umass.edu and then you can send it out to UMass and they will do it. And um, they do a much more extensive test than the, the kit that I saw at um, Home Depot, I think. Yes, basic kindness, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I hold doors for people, I say, excuse me. Um, I don't reach in front of people at the store. I yeah, it's just like little, little things that um, I just can't imagine not doing that people don't do. And I'm not great with social cues, you know, but I guess I'm better than some. <laughs> I don't know. Must be a Pam thing. I'm really nice to like, oh, yes, it, that is, yes. Uh, a Pam, and, for Pam from Pammy's Planty Things and I have the joke about it being a Pam thing um, because we've, of all the Pams we've ever met, we, we tend to all be at some we're kind of a type, uh, usually really into animals or plants or both, uh, <laughs> usually mouthy, boner for justice, <laughs> running traits. Actually two of the, I now know four Pams, uh, two are planty people and two are animal rescue people. It's very strange. <laughs> the basement botanist, that sounds fun. New to YouTube and my content is similar to yours. I grow plants too. Any tips on getting started? Absolutely. And you can message me anytime if you want to talk shop. But um, 
congrats on getting the channel going. First of all, that's the hardest part. Um, let's see, scientists, I'm getting um, doing spices and lettuce. So I imagine you're looking to get some eyeballs on your videos. Um, my general things that have worked for me is to get to the damn point. Nobody cares about uh, your long lofty intro. I mean, somebody may eventually people who just like you will start watching your channel and then you can, you can do whatever you want really. But um, when you're initially just starting to keep people's attention, you want to solve a problem that they have a lot of times, especially with gardening, they're, they're looking for answers to a question, right? That's why most of us watch YouTube instructional stuff. Um, and it doesn't help I mean, it doesn't hurt when that information is actually enjoyable to watch as well. So the infotainment, um, that's what I like to tell people I do. I provide infotainment. Um, and so you want to get to the point, you need good titles, good thumbnail, good clickable thumbnail. Um, I've noticed a lot of people when they get started use like really, including myself, um, use really like hard to read fonts and just like, I don't know, the thumbnails will be real busy. There's like a lot of stuff going on. Um, thumbnails are a whole, a whole art form, I think. But, um, you know, as long as you, people basically want to be able to look at your video as they're scrolling through on their thing, know exactly what you're going to tell them. And if they want to know that, they want to be able to click that video and have you tell them quickly. <laughs> Not in a rush, but quickly. Just get to the damn point. Um, so that is that is always my first bit of advice. Um, decent sound goes a long way. Um, a little lavalier clip mic that's like $20 on you know Amazon or whatever um, go, goes a long way for sure um, in, in making your videos more watchable. And... Um, Doing what you're doing now is a great thing to do. Pop into lives, leave comments. You know, obviously you don't want to be going into people's comments and being like, check out my channel, like, like, and subscribe, you know, don't seem like, cause you're just gonna sound like a spam bot, you know? Um, but I mean, when people message me and they're like, Hey, I started the channel. You want to look at it? Let me know if you have any tips or anything. Like as long as I can do that, like and most of the time I can, um, perhaps not right away, but I, I do do that for people too. So just, yeah, make friends, be in the chats, engage in the community. Um, consistency goes a long way on YouTube. I'm not great with that personally, but um, if you put out a video on Wednesday one week and then you put out a video on Wednesday the next week and then the week after that you don't put out any videos and then the week after that you don't put out a video till like Sunday, you might lose a little bit of that algorithm juice. Um, I wouldn't let that stuff really mess with your head too much right now though. Just like make some good stuff. Just make content that's useful to people right now and the people will find you. They will come, they will figure it out. And like right now doing seed hauls, garden planning videos, anything like that. Um, you know, you're on with like the, while you're planting spring veggies, people are going to be looking up information about that kind of stuff. So hey, you just want to be the person that has that answer that people are looking for. And, don't, and, and, you know, you get to the point so that you're not wasting their time. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of the basics. But please feel free to reach out anytime and we can uh, we can chat. I'm on Instagram if you are or I have an email um, up in the up in the description box. I may have triple planted this row of seeds because I'm not even sure where I left off at this point is I'm talking and planting. This is what happened last year. I did like a whole tray of seeds while I was on live and oh my God, <laughs> it was labeled wrong. I skipped cells. It was terrible. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. I'll show you guys later in the season how, how botched this tray ended up being. Oh shit. Did I go? Oh, I don't even know if I did this right. Uh... Okay, well, we may be overseeding this tray a bit. That's okay. Okay, let's see. I was your first plant tuber. Oh, I love that. Well, oh, I'm definitely behind on the chat here. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, when I was repotting my giant monstera. That was a great video. And that's the thing is when you're starting your channel, you have no idea what video it's going to be that ends up bringing you all the traffic because I had that one video with the, with the Monstera and the big sister talk and, and man, that went everywhere. And it still get, I still get, I get comments almost every day on that video, which is crazy to me because it's old. <laughs> all right. I'm just going to like dump a shitload of seeds in here because I'm not sure if I missed a row or not. 
There we go. Walla Walla Onions in. Hey. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Brito. Yeah, I haven't, uh, I've been trying to get a little bit more consistent on the YouTube thing. I'm working, I'm working, trying real hard to take this shit seriously. I have so many ideas for, for content and everything. I just have such a hard time having any quiet time to do any kind of filming. There's my son's always screaming in the background all my videos <laughs> playing his games. And then, um, yeah. Get in those slumps, they suck. Oh my God, my, yeah, um, the, I overseeded the absolute shit out of my licorice mint in there and I really need to break that one up today too because um, I, I didn't think it was gonna germinate at such a, in such a crazy rate. Oh, the trolls, you know what? Um, I could go on an entire dissertation about trolls and how sad and, and, and angry it makes me that they ever get their way to the point where somebody won't do something because of that. Like you don't know those people. They're fucking strangers, probably losers. They're nobody you would go to advise for like ever. You would have not even, if you wanted a sandwich at a fucking sub shop, you probably wouldn't ask these people for like their advice on that. So they can, they cannot, factor into your decisions when it comes to doing something that you want to do like that. They can't, you can't let them, you can't let them because that's just too sad. It's too, too sad. It makes me too, too sad. Yes, Amanda. That's why. Okay. I'm like, I know, I know your name. I used to have a, um, a friend with your last name and her name was, uh, Adrian Libby. So I always like it. your name stuck in my head because, uh, of her probably it's a rememberable name and you've been here from cvs it's so crazy thank you that's that's crazy to me i really um if people don't know i started my channel doing like money saving and coupon videos and stuff like that so when i changed over to plants which is pretty it wasn't too long right manda i don't think i was doing couponing for all that long before i switched over I was pretty sure I was going to lose every single person that subscribed to me because why would they, you know, like how many were going to be like into plants and couponing and stuff. But a lot of people stuck around, even ones that don't grow plants. I still have them talking on my uh, comments all the time and everything. And that's just kind of what I mean about like you find your people, you know, and they'll watch you for reasons other than what they maybe came to you for to begin with. Just they could be doing something very productive like gardening, but then they go on the internet to troll instead. It's very hard for me to imagine spending my time like that. Just because like I don't have, like, I don't know, time is such a precious thing to me that I just, making other people upset or at least trying to, why? For no reason, like don't get me wrong, I've trolled the shit out of people who I have felt deserved it, um, you know, like, uh, like for example, that remember that guy that like had the AIDS drug or whatever, and he like cranked the price up to a Brazilian dollars. He definitely blocked me on Twitter, um, <laughs> and I'm fine with that. Um, so you know, there there are times when trolling has its place, <laughs> but like just a random person because you just saw that somebody was live on the internet, and you're like, I'm gonna go tell this bitch she's ugly or something. Like, okay, like do you not feel stuff when you like do mean things to people? Because like that makes my my insides feel bad. I can't imagine like thinking that's fun. I'm like, I want to go make that person sad. This is weird. <laughs> yeah, trolling Nazis is totally appropriate. They're not people. Um, all right, so we're going to do some spinach next. And I'm going to try to pay attention. This is going to be hilarious. So I will definitely show you guys this tray in a few weeks when there's like 36 onions in one square and then like none in the next three. Yes, hurt people hurt people, and that is the truest dang thing in the world. Uh, yeah, it is. And I wish that all the time that that was enough for me, knowing that that was enough for me to just always ignore them, but um, not always the case. <laughs> not always the case. Yes, yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, Pam. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to put that on the screen because I'm bad at reading. Okay. Uh, question that all the time. I literally just thought I was crazy and not normal for like caring how others feel. Yeah. 
yeah, factors into factors into what I do a lot. Um, oh, I've been touching things. Jesus, Jesus. And uh, Angela, I know you've been around forever, forever too. Oh, thank you. I love my finger tattoos. Everybody tried to talk me out of those. I was like, why? I got tattoos all over me. What's the difference? <laughs> Like, oh, am I not going to get a real job? Like, does it look like I have one of those? <laughs> yes, yes. If you want to do a channel, do it. I mean, gosh, like, why not? It's not like you can't just delete it if you want to, you know? So it's really low stakes. It's pretty low stakes. Oh, Amanda, that must be fun to go visit her. <laughs> We're like, hey, I'll be there in a little while. <laughs> Yes, the purposely going out of your way to hurt somebody's weird, weird behavior. That's what I say. It's just like so, it's such antisocial, like just divergent weird behavior that, you know, you can't really take that on yourself. That's, that's, that's other people's stuff. I mean, even people that suck sometimes, I'm just like, oh, do we, uh, do we need to be that mean? Like, oh, <laughs> I don't know. I think it's good. And I think it's got a lot to do with if you were ever in that position as well. Like, I think you kind of go one way or the other, right? Like if you got picked on, you either become the bully or you become vehemently anti-bully and, uh, you know, or you become me and sometimes bully bullies because you've gotten a uh, combination of traumas. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I know. And the get ready with me was like a totally random first video. That was actually because a lot of my friends on Facebook were always like asking me to do makeup videos, which is something I just didn't really want to do. So he did some, but like it was definitely not something I was super comfortable with doing or excited about. Um, but I did. Um, seemed like a thing to do. So now my first video, which is still on my channel um, and very cringy for me to watch is a get ready with me. <laughs> okay, and that, that's how they all start though. I mean, we all start with no subscribers. Everybody starts with nobody watching. <laughs> nobody giving a shit. I had, uh, I had a few friends on like Facebook, you know, that would like watch my my earlier videos or whatever. But I mean, for the most part, the reason I started this was because the people that are in my real life are not into the things that I'm into on this level. So, um, you know, it only made sense to me to kind of just put myself out there and maybe find some people that were into that kind of stuff because I could sit and talk about plants and seeds and shit like that all fucking day, all day. My brain never gets tired of it ever, ever. And, and I can't even imagine how exhausting it is to listen to me if you don't care about plants or seeds or gardens that doesn't make any sense to me but those people exist <laughs> so it's been really cool and in the community so awesome and i don't care everybody loves to just be like oh yeah the plant community so nice so this fucking drama we all know this drama i was like you know those are fucking people of course it's fucking drama but like God, I've been, I've been in a lot of communities and this one is not even half as bad as some of the ones that I have been a part of. So, um, for it, I, at least in my, so I can't obviously can't speak for everybody in the community, but in my experience, I, some of the coolest freaking people I know have come out of just this plant community and I, I don't really experience drama. So, I mean, I'm sure people run their mouths behind my back, but I don't go looking for it. So, you know. It might be happening, but I don't, if I don't know, then who cares? <laughs> People are entitled to their own opinion. Their opinion of me is not my business, frankly. All right. Now we've got three rows of spinach, which was not my intention, but I was talking. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I mean, this community is cool. And I feel like, you know... People are people, like we're all gonna get along with different kinds of people, and that doesn't necessarily mean that they're not good people, they're just not your people, you know. I, for example, need people who are okay with the fact that I might not return their messages for five days because sometimes I just don't want to even look at my phone at all. It gives me anxiety. And then, you know, I've had friends that if I didn't get right back to them, would just be like so dramatic about it all the time. And I'm just like, I just don't 
want to talk to anyone right now. Like I have bodily autonomy. I'm allowed not to speak to people when I don't want to. <laughs> so I, I uh, if you know if someone if if it's important, then yes, I will drop everything. But um, if you're just messaging me some shit, you'll just be like, hey, how's it going? Then you can fucking wait till I see it. Jesus. <laughs> How are we feeling about plant fluences traveling to aeroid show? What? Is there an aeroid show right now? Please tell me people aren't actually doing that, Cody, and this is just a hypothetical question because I'm going to get myself in trouble if not. Who the fuck is doing that? I get like I can't even tell you how many YouTubers I watch just in general. Um, just a secret. I don't really watch a whole lot of um, plant videos just because like, it's what I do all day, you know? Um, so when I want to turn off, I tend to watch like travel kind of channels or like homey channels or, you know, crappy cooking, stuff, shit like that. Um, and just how many of them went home for the holidays was, was unfucking believable to me. Unfucking believable. Like, and I know some of them are like pretty isolated, you know, maybe they live in a cabin in the woods or whatever, but the people you're visiting aren't. <laughs> It'll be like, oh, I got tested last week. And it's like, okay, great. What about all the days that elapsed between that and your potentially incorrect test, you big dummy? <sighs> okay. Hypothetically, IAS February 7th. Um, that would be really fucking stupid if anybody did that. And that would really piss me off. And I would probably mouth off about it, frankly. I want to go to the IAS show too, but like, not enough to endanger people's fucking lives for it. <sighs> Shit gets me so angry because, like, especially because I know people in other countries that can live their fucking life right now because everyone did what they were supposed to do. And then here everyone's like, oh, that doesn't even matter. Fucking masks don't do anything and you don't even know. But it's like we have actual tangible fucking examples that it works right there. <laughs> I just, <sighs> I hate it. I hate it. Denial of reality. Big pet peeve of mine. <laughs> Big pet peeve of mine. And I miss my damn friends. <laughs> I want to have a life again, motherfuckers. Stay in your damn house. And like the amount of people that have to work, like, and I have some sympathy. Like I know there's a lot of people that have to go to fucking work every day at like a stupid mall or something. And I can imagine it's really difficult to be like, okay, well I'm at work with people all fucking day. So what, I can't go out to the restaurant after work and get a fucking like, what's the difference? So like, I, I mean, I, I do have some empathy for like that kind of exhaustion after a year, but like to travel out of state, the fuck are you thinking? <laughs> like, what are you thinking? And it's got, I mean, and I, I keep thinking like, well, it must be people that don't know anyone that's gotten sick or whatever. But then time and time again, I'm proven wrong on that assumption as well. So maybe it's because I have nurses in my family <laughs> and I get firsthand accounts of how fucking awful everything is right now uh, pretty regularly. Maybe that's why. Maybe it's because my one of my nurse cousins got sick with it and damn near died. Um Yeah, see, you're working with 400 people. You should, what the fuck? Uh, I'm not trying to get on my socialism rant today like I do at the end of every single live, but everybody should have been paid to stay home fucking months ago. It would have been so much cheaper. Now look at the fucking rescue packages and shit that we have to pass because we couldn't spend the money then to just pay people to stay the fuck home before they got really sick of it you know like before all of the like we had a good month window or i feel like we really could have pulled that off without all of the juckets of the country burning the whole place down oh we missed it we missed it and now if we try to do anything like that again the juckets are going to burn the country down so great spiff work in retail and i still wouldn't feel comfortable eating maskless at a restaurant it's very confusing to me very confusing to me. I did it one time um, when I went out with my friend in the summer when the numbers were low um, and there was nobody else in the restaurant and we still felt like uncomfortable, you know, like it's just, it's not being outside without a mask now is like, feels weird. <laughs> I don't forget it when I go to the store anymore. I used to get out of my car, get all the way to the store doors and be like, oh, ooh, you know, and then have to go back. I'm an ER nurse. They ruined my life and career. I am sorry. 
to hear that. I that's what my sister is an ER nurse as well. She's um, she does the triage and everything, and uh, she always sends me pictures in her space suit. There are anti-mask nurses in my ER. That may, what? Is that the thing? Of course it's the thing. I don't even know why I'm surprised. I, that makes me want to go lay down. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, it hurts my feelings. Um, I just, you know, and what makes me angry is that we live in a country where we are lied to so often by the government that like, as angry as that makes me, um, I can sometimes, I don't want to use the word understand, but um, I can sometimes follow how somebody would come to the conclusion that they're being lied to in some way about this. But the whole thing, like, have you ever seen anything? See, now the person that asked me how to grow their YouTube channel, um, don't do what that person's doing right now. See, because... I'm just going to block them. Um, so anyway, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's just like, I get it because like, and, and especially with like vaccines, I actually have a lot of um, empathy for people who are scared of vaccines because especially people of color, um, because they have tangible fucking history of bad shit being done to them because they were lied to about vaccines. You know what I mean? Like, so I have empathy. It doesn't mean that I'm okay with it. <laughs> but, uh, so it. That does enable me to at least speak to people with some patience when it comes to things like that. But um, the COVID thing after a while, yeah, I just get straight. I go straight to angry at this point because there's just too much. Like you're you're willfully ignoring reality, and I don't know why. I don't know why. Um, I did to this uh, in a podcast for my Patreon, but. Um, I was talking about this article that I read that was discussing what, how Americans um, view freedom versus how perhaps the rest of the democratic world views it. And, and Americans, um, not you or I, not us, um, but you know, the, those ones, um, they all tend to believe, oh honey, I got kicked out of Catholic school a long time ago. You're barking up the wrong tree. Um, what was I saying before they Jesus to me? Uh, uh, oh, the freedom thing. Like we have this notion of freedom where we want freedom from doing anything for anybody else. Like that's really the only freedom that like, especially the right seems to care about. It's like, like I don't want to have to feed those people. They don't deserve to eat. I, I don't, none of my money goes there. But then your money's going bailing out fucking billionaires, uh, turning kids in the desert into skeletons, um, you know, it just causing suffering all over the place. Useless police. They get so much of our money uh, to, 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 to just fucking kill people. Uh, like, why doesn't that make people angry? That's our money. Your money should help you and everyone else like you, whether you like how they live or not, or whether you think they're lazy or not. With so much fucking money. Nobody should be starving in this country. It's dumb. It's just dumb. It's not even dumb. It's intentional. You know what I mean? So like, ugh. ugh. So yeah, yeah, here we go on my socialist soapbox again. You guys always do this to me. Or do I do this to you? I don't. <laughs> okay, so we got one tray. We got onions, 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 and spinach. And some cabbage. Because I talked too much and I planted too many onions. But that's okay. I don't know what I'm doing with onions, so now we got room to screw up. All right, what else can I plant? Ugh. I need to find my strawberries. Where the fuck did those things go? We got lots of onions. I hope it works. I'm a little late on, on planting them. <laughs> I'm so bitter and it's not like me. Oh, that makes me so sad. And I know like that, what do they call that? Um, Caret caretaker fatigue or something like you like physically can't care you physically can't like it's not and that's why I get um a little annoyed when people are uh, unkind to um overworked healthcare staff and they're like oh they don't care and it's like well they can't you physically fucking can't you, you physically fucking can't care 
to that extent every day endlessly with no break eventually your body is going to compensate and be like you just can't care about this that much or, you, or you're just going to like resent these people you know like ugh, you poor thing i hope you're taking care of yourself while you're not at work I can't wait till this is over. I can't even imagine like being all the nursing students and everything that just like, <laughs> just getting out of school and then just get hit with this. Like, fuck, that is not what you trained for. It is, but like not at the same way. <laughs> yeah, so understandable. So beyond understandable. Even I remember when my sister had open heart surgery. I mean, uh, my sister, uh, my, let's hope not. Ugh, uh, Knock it on wood. Uh, my cousin had open heart surgery and um, she was, when she woke up, I was the only person there when she woke up, her family was stuck in uh, traffic. So when she woke up from the surgery, I was the only one there and they have, you know, like a drain coming out of you. And I guess that's like, um, because it's like an external pain, they, they don't have a way of really medicating that sort of pain the way that they would medicate the other pains that she would be having. So when she woke up, she was in screaming fucking agony. I, it, was, it was the most awful thing that I have ever witnessed in my entire life. Like I, um, horrible. It was, it was horrible to watch her be in that much pain. And, and all of the staff was just like so unaffected by it because they, that's the ward. Like every day, 10 people wake up like that and are in blinding pain. And all of the nurses know that that pain's going to go away and there's nothing they can do about it. So they're like very, uh, disaffected. And I remember, um, my uh, other cousin getting very upset about it. And I was like, dude, you have to understand that this is like every day. This is every day for these people. They can't bleed for every person that comes in here where they're gonna lose their minds. Like it's, that's why sometimes bedside manner is not great, I think. As with most things, it's not about you. When <laughs> someone's too tired to deal with your shit. Uh. So many baby nurses taking travel assignments for the high pay and have no idea what they're doing. Oh, I can't even imagine. Uh. Yep. Yeah. The, yeah. The, it was it was so hard to see her in that much pain. But by the end of the day, she was sitting up. You know, like she was bitching about the drain. Like, when's this fucking thing coming out? But gradually, like the pain did wear off. Thank fuck. Um, yeah, that was, that was enough to make me be like, okay, maybe I need to stop eating so much cheese, but <laughs> we have a lot of heart problems in my family. And I swear I get like chest pain sometimes. Every time I go to the doctor, they treat me like I'm making things up because yeah, I'm a lady. I'm a big dumb lady brain making stuff up. Sister broke down. She's a phlebotomist and screamed at our family saying, you don't have to see these people alone every day. That's the other thing is like, you're alone. You don't even have your family. Like that's the most horrific. If people aren't afraid to get sick, like that's what, that's what scares me is going through it alone. Like I don't want to be alone going through something like that. So that is enough to keep my ass in the house where it belongs right now. It makes me so sad that it's just not enough for other people. And now we have this whole other Friggin' strain to just make everything else suck even more. Ugh, I know cheese is the best. Ugh, I'm trying to get rid of cheese and dairy. Um, a because it's terrible for me, and B because it's an incredibly cruel and awful industry. Um, I'm not a veggie anymore, but uh, I do maintain the guilt. <laughs> so I would like to get that stuff out of my diet as much as possible. But oh man, cooking without cheese is hard. <laughs> really hard especially when you're trying to eat more veggies like I feel like that was what always kept me a vegetarian was that I could have the veggies but I could also have cheese but then like eventually I learned about the dairy market and I was like oh this is I'm not helping <laughs> fuck yes drawing fluid from the heart yes I know they were like and it was funny because she's a nurse so she went through that whole surgery so once she was you know cognizant and able to sit up and question the doctor was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. It must be a total trip to have like a medical professional as your patient because like you can just talk to them, you know, like about what's happening and like where it happened and everything. So she's asking all these questions and going over everybody else's heads and we're just like, is it, what did he say? <laughs> oh, just, yeah, the waiting for the test and stuff. And my poor, my poor son woke up last night and didn't feel well for like a minute. He was having a hard time getting to sleep. And I think he was like hot. He, he definitely gets anxiety and I don't think he knows how to 
verbalize it yet, like how he's feeling. So he, he'll tell me he doesn't feel good and he feels like he's going to throw up. Um, oh, strawberries, thank you. I know, I'm so trying to find them. I don't know where the hell they went. Um, <laughs> but he woke up and he was like, Mom, I need to, quick, I need food. I need to know if I can taste anything. Like, if this is COVID, it's going to be really bad or something. I was like, oh, buddy, like, it's not COVID. You've been in the house. You know, like, we haven't gone anywhere. Um, but just like, can you imagine just being a child and having to, like, think about this? Oh. Uh, terrible. So weird. This this is definitely gonna get demonetized too. <laughs> if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, I am like having the biggest battle with with this platform uh, presently. I'm afraid to say them by name; they'll appear. Um, but they just keep demonetizing my shit for no reason. And then like I appeal it, and I'm like, um, this is it's a video about plants. There's nothing in there. Like even once I don't even cuss or nothing, and and then just. And then they approve the appeal and everything's fine. But like, have to go through it every time I post a video all of a sudden. I'm like, what? Is, like, are people reporting me? Like, did I piss somebody off? Like, what is happening? You'd think that after you pass so many um, audits or whatever, and, and it's obvious that it was a mistake, that eventually they would, I don't know, stop torturing you so much? I guess not, though. For real, what did I do with these damn strawberries? <laughs> And that was the thing I really needed to get in the ground, like, I mean, in the pots, like, now, they need to grow. I can't believe I can't find them. That is so irritating. And, like, look how organized I am. Why can't I find something right now? <laughs> Cody, to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sweetie. Uh, no, you guys are the best. So supportive. My mom had a cough and my son started crying. So he was worried she might die. Oh my God. Poor thing. You know, my kids know that I have asthma too. So they're very like extra careful about me usually. Oh, you got it, Em? Shit. I got it. Not from partying or doing anything wrong. I was alone. My partner... As my partner didn't have an exposure, so he moved out. Oh, that must have been awful. He probably felt like shit, too, about it. That sucks. Was it really bad? How bad did you get it? Not to scare everybody. <laughs> I'm just curious. Because you're fairly young. Um, yeah, and that's what sucks. Is like I, I know probably, I'd say at this point, probably 10 people that have gotten it. Um, and really only a few were acting stupid. You know, there were definitely a few that I was like, oh, that person is 100% going to get it. And then they did. And I was like, yeah, okay, well, that's not, that's not shocking. But a lot of people were just at work. There's just nothing they can do about it, you know. <clears throat> okay, so I'm guessing the strawberries are just not in here. I don't know where the fuck they went. Son of a bitch. <clears throat> to find them what i'm doing this year is i'm keeping all of my empty seed packets so that next year i'll have this nice little stack of things that i know i'm out of because this year i ordered all my seeds and then i went and i'd like open up a packet and be like hey. and then there'd be nothing in there i'm like damn it it was like the flu on steroids that sounds terrible yep that sounds that sounds like it sucks definitely don't want that oh cody my son does too he gets um, reactions to all kinds of all kinds of fruits. Something about the pollen or the flowers of the fruit. He's like allergic to, so he can eat a lot of stuff cooked, but not uncooked. Um, and strawberries is definitely one of them. Okay, I am scrolling up because I missed some stuff. Do, do, do. Oh my God, Chanel! My mom, my main, and my only remaining client, and my little sister all had COVID in the last month. Oh my God! Where are you again? State. I must be. That must be terrible out there. I see you, nurse. Here, this year has been insane. I am a charge nurse, and have dealt with so many new grads and travel nurses. We have all the same goal: help as many people as you can. Oh, you guys have all my love and respect. You were really the ones dealing with the worst of this right now. And it's got to be exhausting. And we're so far into it. I can't even, 
I have a, uh, one of my friends who's a nurse has actually just went back to school because she's kind of like this, like this completely broke her. She was like, I can't, I got to get into admin or something. Like I can't do this anymore. Her back is trash just from just working so hard and lifting people and everything. She's kind of a little, little thing. Yeah. I know. I miss my parents so much. I don't get to see it. My dad has a heart problem. So I, I, we, they're completely sealed off. I can't go over. I haven't seen them. My mom dropped some gifts off uh, right before Christmas, and I saw her outside for a few. But other than that, I've not seen my dad since uh, I went by on Thanksgiving, against my better judgment. But I had I had been quarantining, and so had they. So, but even that, like we were, I wasn't comfortable the whole time, and we called off Christmas because it was just. The numbers got bad again and I'm like nope can't do it can't do it should plant be started now inside for spring or in the ground which one let me see did you say um i don't know which plant you're talking about amanda i think i might have missed it um, oh 91 year old mom that has to give you so much anxiety. I am so sorry. My parents are fairly young. They're in their 60s. Um, but yeah, dad not in good health. And then obviously having lost my brother a couple years ago, I'm a little a little mortality aware than, than I might otherwise already be. Both my parents have passed. I know it sounds awful, but I'm kind of glad they aren't here. That would be way more hard to deal with. Yeah, There's, there have been times where I'm like, you know, um, I hate that my grandparents died so early, um, but I'm not sad that they're not having to deal with this. That's for sure. My boyfriend has a heart condition and we don't live together. It's been really, oh my gosh. So you haven't even been able to see him. Oh, Matt downstairs, uh, Mike's brother, he, his girlfriend and he live apart. She has a dog. Um, and the landlord doesn't want dogs. So I have a feeling that probably has something to do with it. Um, but they, they do get together, but they have to like do all this preparation, you know, like to see each other, they'll go get tests and all this stuff. And, but it took a while. It took a while. Oh, the strawberries. Yeah. I, I can't buy them. So I, um, <laughs> Uh, I don't know where they are, but I think the strawberries, if you're starting from seed now, you could start between now and like the next two, three weeks. I got mixed numbers as I was going through the internet uh, and watching videos on starting strawberries from seed. Some people said that they took a really long time, but I noticed that that tended to be the hybrid versions and that the alpines seemed to sprout faster than people were expecting them to. So um, and you want them to be kind of bigger than other tender ish plants. So I think you, you could probably start them now. Yeah. Get them going. And then outside, when you put them outside, I don't know if you have to wait all the way till June for strawberries. I don't think so. They're a little cold hardy. This is my first time growing them. So that's why I'm a little, I don't really know too much. <laughs> I know coral, right? Just get out the game. <laughs> I regret to tell you, YouTube doesn't pay very much, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, thank you to all the nurses. So much love and respect. And thank you to those who are actually doing their best to stay home and respect others. A fucking men. If you can stay home, please do. Please do. And it makes me so sad because even when I go out, if people just stay the fuck away from each other like they're supposed to, like we'd probably be doing a lot better. But when I'm at grocery stores, I mean, people will literally just be like, reach right they just come right next to me and just reach right over my face and just take whatever they need. And I'm like, you... it's been 11 months. Can you fucking pay attention to where you're going? <laughs> stay away from me. The amount of times stay away from me has come out of my mouth verbally in the store recently has been excessive. Very, very irritating. Hey, Cassie. Sorry, I'm going to try to scroll back here. <laughs> A weekly trip to the grocery store and it was a nurse from the hospital here that crowded us in the checkout i know and it's like you know that just goes to show you some people are just not <laughs> just not um i don't know if it's like a lack of social awareness or if because you would think like oh it's a nurse this person must be very smart and it's like yes they, they have a lot of information in their brain 
but the utilizing it in the proper way apparently is not a guarantee. Uh, and I can't even, can you imagine being like, like a nurse that works with nurses who don't believe in COVID? Because I learned today, that's a thing. I would get in so much trouble at work. In so much trouble. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? I do really good. Um, I'm looking at Pam's comment about never being so sick of her life uh, or never been so sick in her life. I have, um, you probably did have it. You probably did. I have a lot of friends that got really freaking sick in like December and January, like, really sick and then i so sick that like i knew they got sick through social media just being like oh my god i was so so sick i can't believe it and um and then the covid thing popped up and of course we're not ever going to really know right i don't i guess you can get tested for the antibodies probably and figure out if that's what you had if you don't get infected again oh i know poor reb reb got completely sick because of the uh just the um Reb is Plantastica here on YouTube. She got very sick directly due to the tomfuckery of her job. Just being completely reckless. This is so, so sad and fucked up. Oh, Jenny broke your collarbone. Ow. Ugh. Oh my God, that must have hurt. Ow. I feel, like, I feel like I'm getting pain right there now. I'm thinking about it too much. Ah. I hope it's okay now. How long is that? That takes a while to heal, right? I don't think there's a whole lot you can do for that, can you? Well, I guess if yours was really fucked, they probably had to. My ex had it, uh, his fractured. <laughs> How did the game over that nurse life? <laughs> yes. You know, it's a hard job. I can't imagine doing it. Um, you know, those kind of jobs, like, I really feel like. I mean, you got probably 10 years before you burn in the hell out of just any of them, like EMT, doctors, like nurses. You must get so burned out after a while. Feels like those, and those are jobs that people tend to think like, oh, I'm going to have this job for the rest of my life. But like, oh my gosh, to have that kind of job long term, is, is that's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. I've never understood that people that walk around on speakerphone in the store, that is the weirdest thing to me too. It really is just a completely like um, different experience of life. I think like some people just <laughs> like, you just don't give a fuck. <laughs> it, it, I feel, I feel like I can feel when I'm bothering people for the most part. And what's terrible ha about having ADD is that I know I'm when I'm annoying someone and it doesn't always make me stop talking. Like sometimes I like literally just can't shut my fucking mouth. And even in my brain, I'm going, you are annoying the shit out of this person. You need to be quieter. First of all, stop yelling. <laughs> sometimes I just can't stop. It's terrible. So maybe that's what it's like. I don't know. I got to say, though, I really love the guy that walks down my street and just sings at the top of his lungs. If, if you guys have been with me a while, you may have heard him in some of the garden vlogs. It's the best. I love singing guy. I aspire to give that little amount of fucks. Like to just walk down the street and just... And he doesn't have an amazing voice, you know, it's not, it's not like chalk, you know, nails on a chalkboard or anything, but not a great voice, but he don't give a fuck. <laughs> Walking down the street, just belting out kiss from a rose at the top of his lungs. Oh, what a beautiful human being that person is. I love him. Never waves back to me when I say hi to him, but that's okay. <laughs> We're friends in my head. <laughs> Oh God. Yeah. It's that is collarbone. That's one of those bones that you're just like, ah, like you don't even think that that can break, but it does. I, I, you know, several people have broken their collarbones. It's a pretty fragile one, I guess. Oh, ow. Ow. I broke my elbow once. I, fr I fractured my elbow and that was probably the most irritating pain in long term. Like I, it still isn't right like at all. It, it hurts when it, Hurts when it's crappy out and uh, sometimes it'll snap and then sometimes it'll like lock up. I never went to physical therapy like I was supposed to, so. That might be why. <laughs> Work at the hospital, I would say nurses get a lot of credit. They don't deserve. 
yeah, I, I had that experience with teachers <laughs> when I was teaching. I was like, okay, some of these people don't deserve all the praise that they get. <laughs> I felt terrible saying it, but it was just like, ah, some of these people phoned it in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Kimberly, I don't know where the strawberries are. I have no idea. I don't know where they are. No, no, no buggering idea. I'm going to have to look around my house. <laughs> I got like four things of seeds this week and I, there are two of them that are not in front of me right now. So they must be around somewhere. Can't lift anything for a while. So I'm a bit worried about the summer gardening stuff. Um, I have that issue as well with not being able to lift heavy things because I have a um, umbilical hernia from when I was pregnant with my son, which is a little hole in my abdomen um, that sometimes my intestines get stuck in. Um, and they knew I had this but I'm poor, so no one cares. Um, so they just never fixed it and um, never cared. So I still have that. So now I'm not, and, and I've had it for years and it never bothered me. And I thought maybe it just fixed itself. <laughs> and guess what that doesn't, guess what doesn't happen? That doesn't happen. It doesn't fix itself. Um, so I have a hole in my abdomen so I can't actually lift anything super heavy or I could potentially strangle my own organs and die. So. And I also have to pay for the surgery to fix it because until my intestines are being strangled, um, it's an elective surgery. So, good times. Oh, I want to start something else. Oh, I do want to show you guys what I got. Oh, it's kind of like fucking 72 hours into this. I don't know if I'm going to keep the lives up. Do you guys like when I keep the lives up? I usually just don't. <laughs> Because they're long and I feel like nobody watches them. Um, so, if you've been to your local Dollar Tree, uh, they have their gardening stuff out right now. No seeds at mine yet, which is annoying. Um, I was going to see if I could snap up some cheapy flower seeds. But um, they do have a lot of fancy stuff. So, I went and I restocked on these. The um, plant hangers that I use all over my house. Because for some reason, these are like $7 at Home Depot. Why? Does anybody know what the fuck is wrong with these people? Like, I feel like Ace Hardware, Lowe's, Home Depot, this exact same thing is like 6 to $7. Um, and then if they're fancy, forget it. It's like $15. Bucks. Um, they're dollar. It's Dollar Tree. And they always sell out. So I bought seven of them. <laughs> Should be good for the next year. And uh, that's what I do with the Dollar Tree in the spring is I just stock up on everything I want for the whole rest of the year. And then, uh, yeah. and this year they have these yellow pots. I think my camera's going to be a dick about it. Oh, there we go. They have these like mustard yellow plastic pots. These are the kind that you're going to have to like drill some holes in the bottom. They have like the preparation perforations for holes, but um, no holes. And then they have, I just got a couple of these green self-waterers, which are not my favorite, but since I'm going to be doing some propping and giving stuff away, I try to, uh, I try to, oh, bye Amanda, have a good day. Um, I try to keep them on hand. Okay, so we got through that. Uh, these, I couldn't get my hands on these last year. I got them this year. These are little plant clips. And I'm excited for these for like house plants and attaching little vines to stuff. Oh, so exciting. <laughs> well, why these little things make me so happy, but I got those. They have some flex tie there for tying up plants without beating the crap out of them. So I grabbed some of that and floral tape. Got some extra snippers because I always lose mine. And then I always grab their little plastic nursery pot kind of things because um, these come in a lot of handy. Um, I never get those little baby clay pots that they sell there. I used to. I hate those things. And if you look at them, they're painted. They're not, they're not real clay. They're not like what they're supposed to be. They're not terracotta pots. I think they're like some other kind of cheaper clay and then they're just like painted and they don't work like terracotta i don't know what's wrong with them but they just they suck <laughs> killed so many of my plants with those stupid things 
Yeah, I gotta, I don't know, I gotta get that, I gotta get that fixed. Um, this, I found out that the thing had not closed and like my organs popped out. I actually shoved them back into my own body. That's really fun. Um, so I found that out right at the beginning of the pandemic. So I haven't been able to do anything about it. And I used to lift weights and stuff and I, I'm afraid to do it now. I don't wanna hurt myself. <sighs> so irritating. Good night, Sophie. I know I'm going to get out of here at some point soon as well. I may hop on IG live <clears throat> for a little bit just to say hi over there. I'm trying to get my lives done today. We have been doing, oh my God, is it really been two and a half hours? Holy shit. You guys are troopers. Thanks for hanging out with me for that long. <laughs> is it really 85 people still here? That's bananas. That is bananas. Yeah, go look at your pots. I mean, they're not like, you know what? You can throw cactus in there. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. But I swear to God, I have other tiny terracotta pots that are fine. And then everything I put in those stupid cheap pots just isn't doing super well. What else can I plant here? I got another shit going on. Let me show you. I got some herbs I wanted to put in. This is my ongoing stuff that needs to get planted box, but I've gone through a good chunk of this already. Mm -hmm. I don't think I need to start these yet. I did already start my habanada pepper the other day. This one, um, I noticed the other day on someone's video. I can't remember what it was. Most of my hot peppers are a different kind. They're, let's see if I can find the, yes, most of my hot peppers are cap. Capsicum, capsicum, why can't I say that? I feel like I can hear the word, but I can't make it come out of my mouth. Capsaicum, capsicum, you know, the Latin word for pepper. Um, and the most of them are the anum, A-N-N-U-U-M. I apologize, my Latin is terrible. Um, but this one is a different, different kind. It is capsicum Chinese. And any of those that say that are Chinese, because it's not capitalized. Does that mean it's from China though? I can't remember. Um, but any of those kind of peppers need to be started even earlier than regular hot peppers. Sorry, that took me so long to get to that point. Oh, my IG is not linked. Jesus. Somebody tell me how to do YouTube because apparently I can't do it. Uh, mm, 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 mm. That is my IG. And... People think there is no reason for health care reform. My husband and I pay $1,500 a month for insurance for us and a toddler and a baby. And I bet you it does nothing too, right? <laughs> I bet you the insurance isn't even that great. I feel like my parents pay so much money for insurance and then everything that they have to like still pay to get everything done. Like I'm on state insurance because I'm broke and unemployed. Uh, thanks, Corona. But my state has the kind of, like we basically had Obamacare before Obamacare. Ironically from a Republican, Mitt Romney. Um, but... It worked out really well here where we, we have our problems. It's not a perfect system, but even if you are employed, you can do a sliding scale um, for a lot of the public insurance. And it's like that tends to cover way more than like, you know, when I was teaching my the health insurance plan they offered. There was more than half of my paycheck and it didn't cover anything. I was like, what is the motivation here? <laughs> like, what is, like, what is anybody's motivation to like? buy into public i mean private health insurance if it's not better shouldn't it be better like i don't i i cap say some thank you appreciate you kimberly <laughs> that's how it sounds in my head and then my mouth wasn't doing it because that's not how it really looks yeah because it looks like capsicum that's why okay thank you my brain would have spiraled about that for a long time do you have any tips for scarification on tiny ass sage seeds? Do they need scarification? Do sage seeds need that? Oh, I've never done that before. Um, well, shit, you just blew my mind because I actually didn't know that they needed to do that. Um, I just plant mine and then they grow. So I don't think you even need to. I'm trying to think of how you would do it though, because they are pretty small. Hmm. Could you stick them to like tape, duct tape or something? I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. You've stumped me. 
my husband is self-employed, so we have no choice. But have, yeah, that's that's my that's my issue too. Is uh, that's the option for the self-employed. So even when I was working wedding photography, I'm still I was still on either the sliding scale version or the free public, depending on how much money I made that year or whatever. Because that that definitely fluctuated. I forgot to tell you because I went on a hunt for variegated fish pepper seeds and because of that I found my new favorite seed shop, the Magic Garden Seeds for those who live in Europe. They have the most beautiful packaging I've ever seen and lots of heritage seeds and they have seed advent calendars. What? That is such a good idea. And I am just enough of a dork to be super into that kind of gimmicky shit. Like that, I would love that. <laughs> That's awesome. Very cool. I'll put that on the Screen if anybody wants to check it out that's overseas okay let me scroll back up Michaela if you were asking me what zone I'm in I am in 6b or 7a um, I'm right on the border I live in a weird little microclimate on the coast uh, do we have elho pots in the US I don't I don't think so maybe we do but I have not heard of them Jenny um, yeah Dollar Tree glass bases, yes. I love Dollar Tree for so many things, so many things. Um, I get, that's where I, a lot of people ask me about my moss propagation. I do, I get these at the Dollar Tree, these little, um, I think they're supposed to be candle holders. They're like four by five inch bowl candle holders. And I stuff them with orchid moss. Um, and then I propagate in those and it kind of provides a little bit of a humid environment. And then I can, I can see if there's like too much water in the bottom or anything. Um, these have been wonderful. So a little Dollar Tree pro tip for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Black Sage did. Ah, oh, okay. Yes. I've not grown that. I've not grown that. Hmm. I wonder if could you could you like roll it on a like could you like put a piece of um, sandpaper down on the table and then just like kind of roll the seed around with your finger on top of the um, sandpaper? That might work. I don't think I've physically scarified a seed in my whole life. I'm trying to think if I have. I don't think so. Um pretty much everything I planted last year in the winter sowing was all uh, cold stratified, but some of those may have required being battered up a little bit, but I'm not sure. Maybe that's why I saw them didn't germinate. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'll have to look at Elho. Let's look it up. Let's look it up. I used StreamYard so I could put my screen up here and then didn't even set it up. Elho Planter. Fungus gnat. Uh, 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 uh. It look oh en dot en. Hmm. Yeah, we may not have them. Well, all cookies. Well, these kind of look like those lacusia lachusa pots a little bit. Well, those are cool looking. Yeah, I don't think we have them. I wonder if they ship here. Yeah, I'm not sure. They they are pretty cool looking though. I definitely need to um, spend more time finding awesome um, pots. Like I feel like that's that's where you go. Like once you once you have enough plants and you don't need any more plants, um, then you start collecting pots to go to put your plants in. Because right now I just have like a bunch of bootleg pots with really nice plants. I have like I have like multi hundred dollar plants in like two dollar pots <laughs> right now. Hello, and I ran. Hello. <clears throat> Again, the cobble would have done since it's rough. Yes. Yes. Hmm. That's a good question, Sarah. I wish I could be a little bit more helpful. All right, guys. I think I'm going to get out of here. So Kaylee Ellen suggested pot. No, the Lashusa. Did she? Yeah, she ended up liking those, I think. I remember when she was first trying them out. Uh wasn't sure if she was going to like them or not. <laughs> have to send that bitch a text message and see how she's doing, actually. I have to check in on several friends. I've been a bit of a recluse this week. I haven't talked to 
too many people. All right, friendies, I'm going to get out of here. My brain is starting to hurt a little bit in the middle. Um, but thank you for hanging out with me for damn near three hours. Crazy, crazy. I, I will probably post this, maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I know that it does. If I do post it, it takes forever to like post after I do a StreamYard live. So if you don't see it right away for any reason and you're looking for it, it'll be there. Bill, you're still here. Hi, Bill. Bye, Bill. All right, guys. Bye, Danielle. Thanks for hanging out. Marguerite, Jenny, Krista, Kimberly, Jenny, Sarah, Angela, H. Willis, Pam, Michaela. Scrolling up here. All y'all, thank you. Thank you for everyone lurking and not talking. I know you're there. Thanks for watching. <laughs> oh, oh, please always have everybody in my chat is nice or they get kicked the fuck out. So you're always welcome to talk. Always, always. Please don't uh, don't be encouraged. I mean, don't be um, intimidated by by my squad. They are they are very cool. Everybody's nice. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Um, my next video is going to be a new growth, winter growth houseplant video, pre-recorded thing, tour. I'm going to finish filming it tomorrow, so that should be up soon. And then I don't know what's happening after that. I'll figure it out. Okay. Bye. Thanks, guys.